Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Over WGY Schenectady. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Wolf with Wade Hoyt welcoming you to the second World Series game of 1961. Brought to you by Chrysler Corporation, where engineering puts something extra into every car. Chrysler Corporation, with the live new cars for 62. And Gillette, maker of the 195 adjustable racer and the remarkable super blue blade that gives all but unbelievable shaving comfort. Foamy, the cream of all instant lathers. And Right Guard, the new power spray deodorant for men. We're here in Yankee Stadium, New York, and in a few moments, we'll be all set to bring you the second game in this 1961 World Series. The Yankees won yesterday's series opener, and as we get set for game number two, it's a mild, pleasant, sunny afternoon here in New York. Before coming up to the broadcasting booth, I checked with the rival managers, Ralph Houck of New York and Freddie Hutchinson of Cincinnati. And we have some interesting disclosures for this afternoon's starting lineups for both sides. First of all, for the New York Yankees, attention is centered on Mickey Mantle's condition. And Mantle is out of the lineup once again this afternoon. Ralph Houck told me that Mantle's strength is coming back, but that his hip still pains him, still hurts. And Ralph added to me that it is now problematical at the moment whether or not Mantle will or will not be in the starting lineup on Saturday when that game gets underway. Mickey is available for pinch hitting duties if needed this afternoon. Now, after speaking to Ralph Howick, I went over to the uh, Reds dugout and I was writing down the starting lineup for Cincinnati when Freddie Hutchinson put his hand on my shoulder and stopped me. He said, Bob, hold up on the lineups. I think we'll make a change right here. And I accompanied Freddie then up to the batting cage, and a change was made. As a matter of fact, two changes in the Reds lineup. Elio Chacon is starting at second base in place of Don Blasingame. And the reason for this change is that Blasingame, yesterday, prior to the ball game, while batting practice was going on, took a throw in from the outfield near second base, and he jammed the first finger on his right hand, his throwing hand. And Don told me as I spoke to him before the ball game that the finger was sore during the ball game yesterday, but overnight it stiffened up, and it's difficult for him to bend it, and a mite painful as well. And he told me also that whereas he is able to swing the bat, although the finger is off it just a bit, that the problem that is very acute with him is this. He is not sure on certain throws that he can grip the ball right. And rather than gamble on that possibility that an errant throw might be made, he is not in the starting lineup. So Chacon is playing in place of Blasingame. And one other change. I was standing with Freddie Hutchinson when the catcher, Darrell Johnson, was attempting to swing in his batting practice. And after a couple of swings, it was evident that Johnson was trying but would not be able to play. He has a pulled muscle in his side. He gave it a couple of rather meek tries trying to swing that bat. But he came out of the batting cage shaking his head sorrowfully. And he is out of the lineup with Johnny Edwards taking his place in the catching ranks. So those are the changes. And let's now go over the starting lineups for you. Ilio Chacon is at second base for the Reds. Eddie Casco is at shortstop, batting second. Veda Pinson bats third and is in center field. Frank Robinson bats fourth. He is in left field. Gordy Coleman bats fifth. He is at first base. Wally Post bats sixth. He is in right field. Gene Fries bats seventh at third base. Johnny Edwards is batting eighth and catching, and Joey Jay is doing the pitching. 
batting ninth. For the New York Yankees, Bobby Richardson at second base leads off. Batting second, it's Tony Kubek playing shortstop. Batting third, Roger Maris, who is in center field. Yogi Berra, that's cleanup. He is playing left field. Johnny Blanchard is in right field. He is batting fifth. Elston Howard, the catcher, bats sixth. Bill Scowron at first base, bats seventh. Cleet Boyer, the third baseman, bats eighth. And Ralph Terry is on the mound and batting ninth. Chrysler has been asked to bring you the following public service message. President Kennedy said in his inaugural address, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Thousands have responded to this call by volunteering for the U.S. Peace Corps. Now, a great need exists for peace corpsmen with farm skills. You need not be a college graduate. Any citizen over 18 with farm experience may qualify. Write to Peace Corps, Washington 25, D.C., or consult your local 4-H or Future Farmers of America headquarters. And now the umpires are making their appearances along with the rival managers. Jock O'Conlon of the National League will be at the plate. Frank Dumont of the American League at first. Augie Donatelli of the National League at second. And Ed Rungi of the American League at third. And Shag Crawford along the left field line of the National League. Bob Stewart of the American League along the right field line. sung by Miss Leslie Uggams. Well, there's a stir here in the crowd as we are just a few minutes away from play ball. And with the Yankees leading one game to nothing in the series, the Reds will have to call on one of their favorite tricks, their bounce-back ability. Cincinnati gave a lively demonstration of this art early this season when after losing eight games in a row, they then rallied to win nine straight. As manager Freddie Hutchinson put up with a wry smile after yesterday's loss... We're one down on the losing side, but there's only one club ahead of us. Here are the foul dimensions along the lines here at New York to the foul pole in right and to left. In right, it's 296, and there's a very low ledge there, about four feet high, that curves away. The favorite target is over the 344-foot sign into the right field seats. To left, it's 301 on the line, and it breaks away very sharply. 402 to left center, and 461 to deepest center field. The New York Yankees taking the field. Ilio Chacon will be coming up for the Reds to get the second game underway in just a moment. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the man who was the New York starting pitcher in the first World Series game played by the Yankees in Yankee Stadium, now famed as the broadcaster of the Cincinnati Reds, Wade Hoyt. Wait. All right, here we go. This is, and good afternoon to you all. This is the first half of the first inning here at Yankee Stadium. The second game of the World Series, Elio Chacon will be the first batter. He is substituting for the injured blasting game who yesterday injured his finger in infield practice and played with the injured digit. So Elio Chacon from Caracas, Venezuela, who only understands a few sentences in English, is the first batter. Now, he's a right-handed batter. He batted 265 during the season. He had two home runs, five runs batted in. He will bunt. He'll go to the bunt if he can make it. And uh, he can run. He makes the double play pretty well. He's a pretty nice little ball player. He's, uh, strangely, very much interested in art. And I can tell you a very funny story, a cute story about Elio Chacon. He's been with the Reds a season and a half, this being his 
first full season. He was with them a half a season last year. And at the Reds' victory party in Cincinnati, a fellow who spoke Spanish and he were talking. And uh, Elio Chacon finally discovered that I had one time played ball. I thought that was rather cute. After a year and a half, Chacon discovered that I had once in my lifetime played baseball. So he's up there, batting right-handed. And Ralph Terry is the pitcher, Helston Howard the catcher. Terry, the pitcher, I understand. I uh, haven't seen him too often, uh, but I know he has become a very settled, good-paced worker. In other words, he has good rhythm. He throws well. He studies. He's careful. He has a good curveball. He's developed a slider. His fastball is good. And he is not a, a in, in the term of professionals, a thrower, uh, or a slinger, he's more the idea of the type that pushes the ball toward the plate, but he has good stuff, and he won the clinching game. The Yankees won the clincher down at Baltimore with this man pitching. So Ralph Terry is about to make his pitch. He's from Oklahoma, Chelsea, Oklahoma. So Terry is about to come in there with his first one as Chacon took it inside. Ball one. Jock O'Connell is the home plate umpire. Frank Umont of the American League at first, Augie Donatelli of the National League at second, Ed Rungi of the American League at third. Shag Crawford of the National League down the left field line, Bob Stewart down the right field line. Strike one call. Now that was a fastball. That was over the inside edge. One ball, one strike on Chacon. That ball took off inside a little bit. What we used to call when we were kids in curves. But they don't call them those in, that in, in professional baseball. The curve ball is strike two. That was sort of a slow curve, and it isn't liked by Chacon. One ball, two strikes, one and two. This fellow uses a curve with good effect, and he's a good control pitcher. And the ball hit out in left field, and Barra starts back with the ball, still going back, and caught it back on the racetrack. Way back in left field, Chacon hit the ball pretty well. But Barrow went back and caught it in this one out for the Reds in the first inning. Eddie Casco, who played such a great defensive game yesterday for the Reds as the batter, he had one hit in yesterday's game. He has a, a 1961 series average of 250. He batted 271 in season with two home runs, 27 runs batted in. And Eddie played a bang up game at shortstop for the Reds yesterday. He leaped and caught a line drive. He started a nice double play, or he started the back end of the double play. As Ralph Terry cut loose with his first pitch, that's called a ball by Conlon. That was a fastball. Boyer, who played such great defensive play for the Yankees yesterday, playing in. Strike one as Terry broke that curve over the plate. He snapped that one off beautifully. One ball, one strike, one and one. The Yankees are not playing Casco too deep. They're equidistant, one from the other. And the next pitch made, not a Casco. He fouled the ball. That's back of the Yankee bench into the box seats. One ball, two strikes, one and two. This is the first inning of the 1961 World Series, the second game here at Yankee Stadium. Terry took a look at the scoreboard to check out there. Also, possibly a center fielder who is Roger Maris. The next pitch to Casco. Casco hit another foul. That's in the upper deck over there to the right. So, Berra is the left fielder. Maris is the center fielder. As Mickey Mantle is still on the injured list. And they say that it's possible he may not play even Saturday in Cincinnati. And Johnny Blanchard, who has done such great work with his bat, is in right field. Terry in action again. The right hand of pitches. The curve stayed high. Two balls, two strikes. He tried to break that one in there, but it, it sort of, he did what we call roll it in professional baseball. It rolls off your fingers, in other words, and he, you lose the snap on it. Two balls, two strikes. One out the top of the first inning. Terry ready to go. He pitches again. That's strike three. That was a high fast ball inside as Casco took his cut and struck up. Two away for the Reds in the first inning. And, of course, there is no score so far. Two men up, two men down. Beta Pinson is the batter. 
Veda was up four times yesterday with no hits. His seasonal batting average was 343. He was second in the league in batting. He had 16 home runs, 87 runs batted in. He was second in doubles with 34, and he led the league in hits. The pitch to him, he bounced on two bounces down to Richardson at second, who threw Beta out at first base, and the Reds went down one, two, three in the first inning. One, two, three in the first inning, and so at the end of the first half of the first inning, the score is the Cincinnati Reds nothing, the Yankees coming to bat in the last half. What's the word on the new cars from Chrysler Corporation? What's the word you hear? Lean is the word for Dodge, the new lean breed of Dodge for 1962. For 1962, Dodge features the new Dart 440 with a new functional shape, full size, people size. Dead weight has been engineered out. There's no automotive fat to make the Dodge eat gas. What's left is road-hugging live weight that's easier for the engine to move. For 62, Dodge is probably the easiest handling car you've ever driven. Try the excitement of simplicity. Yours in the new lean breed of Dodge from Chrysler Corporation. Simplicity. And they're simply beautiful. Looks like it's gonna be a Chrysler year. See your Dodge dealer during October open house. The second game of the World Series here at Yankee Stadium moves into the last half of the first inning. The New York Yankees at bat. The Reds did not score in their half, nor did they put a man to base. And Richardson, Bobby Richardson, the Yankee second baseman, who is leading both teams in batting so far, with four times at bat and three hits, batting 750, is up at the plate. He had the most hits as a New York Yankee this past season. He had 173 hits. And he was fifth in the American League in the number of hits. In the season, he batted 261 with three homers and 49 runs batted in. Bobby Richardson, and of course, he also was very plaguing to the Pittsburgh Pirates last year in that series. So this is that fine defensive second baseman for the Yankees and a fellow who can do things with his bat occasionally. A little bothers you a great deal. So Joey Jay out there pitching for the Cincinnati Reds, making his first pitch to Richardson over the plate, strike one. In season, Jay won 21 games and lost 10. He's 6 feet 4, 225 pounds. A couple of years ago when he was with Milwaukee, he hurt his finger and he could not pitch. He broke his finger, could not pitch in the World Series. And Jay is in action again. He fires. That's the curve, but low outside. One ball, one strike. One and one. I would say that Jay and Terry are very similar in the methods of pitching, although they might not be this similar in build or the exact curve of the ball or the fastball, but they use the same basic principle in pitching. As Jay is going in there with another one now, the, there's a ball hit in left field, and there's another base hit for Richardson. They have trouble with Richardson. The Reds are having trouble with him the same way that the Pirates had trouble with Richardson last year. And that is the first man in the second game to reach base. The score is the Cincinnati Reds nothing, and the Yankees have their first man up on base. Tony Kubek, the left-handed batter and left-handed hitting shortstop, is up. Kubek yesterday was at the plate three times with no hits. This season, or this past season, he batted 276 with eight homers, 46 runs batted in. He was second in the league in doubles with 38, batting left-handed. Richardson is edging off first base now as Joey Jay is hesitating. Ready to go on Quebec. The throw to Quebec. Not good. It's outside high. Ball one. Quebec. Rangy lad. As Jay is hesitating again. Throw to first. Richardson got back without trouble. One ball, no strikes. Jay ready to fire now. Hesitates. Here it comes. Outside with the fastball. Ball two. Two or nothing. They play cue back. Oh, slightly right field. They don't shift a lot. Robinson comes in a few steps in left field. But he moves over toward left center. Pinson has shifted, just shading Quebec a little bit in right center. 
And Post in right field is playing him rather normally. The infield shifted one step to the right. He pitched out a Quebec. That's strike one. As Jay broke the slider in there, just slid one off over the plate. Two balls and one strike, two and one on Quebec. Quebec keeps pumping that bat out there, Jay, and Jay just stands there taking the signs from Johnny Edwards, checking his man on first base. Pitches over there. Well, he didn't throw it hard. He just wanted to remind the man on first base that he was thinking of it. As the next pitch made to him, there's a foul. Quebec hit it up on the backstop. Two balls, two strikes. There is no score in the game as yet. The Reds failed to score in their half of the first inning. The Yankees were at bat in the last half with the man on first and no one out. I wanted to tell you that pitchers don't always throw to first base to pick men off. They just try to hold the runners close there to cost them steps in case they should try to steal or in case a double play might be attempted. In other words, it, uh, try to head the runner off and not give him a running start if possible. So the pitch made again to Quebec. He hit another foul. He hit the backstop with that one. Two balls, two strikes. No one out in the bottom of the first. A man on for the Yankees. Strange how down through World Series history... You find the fellows that jump up to plague a certain club or some fellows have the ability to rise in a, in a clutch and play great ball when the chips are down. Richardson has been that kind of a ball player for the Yankees. Of course, the Yankees have had a great many of them, for that matter. The throw in there now to Quebec has bounced down to Casco. There's one out at second, the throw to first. Safe at first base as Chacon's throw to first base was just too late to get Quebec. Richardson was a force out at second. Casco to Chacon. So, Quebec is on first with one out. The bottom of the first inning. No score in the game so far. The Reds did not score in their half. The Yankees at bat and their big slugger up there, Roger Maris. Yesterday, Maris did not get a hit in four turns at bat. For the season, he batted 269 with 61 homers. They pitched to him outside at ball one. Now, as the commissioner of baseball, Mr. Ford Frick, has said, Maris did not break an old record. He set a new one. He set a record with 61 home runs in 162 games, which was a tremendous feat. It really was. He had 31 home runs here at the stadium, 30 on the road. They pitched to him. Maris missed. One ball, one strike as he chased a slider. He also led the league and runs batted in with 142. So he had a real big season, this fellow, and a good ball player. One ball, one strike. So Joey Jay is checking his man on first. He pitches to... Maris, who grounded the ball down to Chacon, who snapped it to second, one out there, throw to first, a bad throw pass first, but it's fielded by Jay as it bounced off the box seats. Maris made no attempt himself to go to second base. He uh, ran down the line and turned to the right. So it, it was just a force out of Quebec at second, Chacon to Casco. Two out in the bottom of the first inning for the Yankees. And there's no score in the game so far. The Reds did not put a man to first in their half of the first inning. And the Yankees at the moment have a man on with two out. Maris on first base and Yogi Berra up. Yogi went to bat officially yesterday twice with no hits. So he hasn't had a hit as yet in the series. Yogi batting left-handed. Right in the center of the batter's box. He pitched to Yogi. Yogi hit a foul. That's coming back in the upper deck of the grandstand. Strike one. No balls, one strike. So Yogi, I think, has 17 records, including some minor ones. Uh, but, of course, now he is playing in his 12th World Series, which is a record. He is playing in his 69th World Series game, which is a record. This is his 248th time at bat 
in a World Series, which is a record. So Joey Jay fires again. Yogi took a high fastball outside. One ball, one strike, one and one. As, of course, Jay keeps trying to work outside, more or less, on these slugging left-handed batters to keep them from pulling the ball, if they can possibly do so. That seems to be the main objective of pitchers pitching here in the stadium. I know it was in my day, and I, it still persists. One on one on Yogi. The pitch now to him is high, and that's ball two. There's another high fastball. Now, of course, Yogi is the type of batter who's a bit unpredictable. Uh, you get one up around his eyes up in there. He's liable to comb one into the seats. I don't know what's going on over the over the red bench, but somebody's been yelling out of there, and I. Yogi gave him a glance or two over there. Two balls, one strike, two out. Bottom of the first inning, man on first base, Maris on first. The throw is to first base, but Maris just trotted back there. No score in the game so far. The score is nothing to nothing. So Jay let loose. No good. The high curve didn't break. Three balls and a strike. Ray and one. A World Series such as this, when you pitch a World Series game, you must keep bearing down all the time at the count of three. And what will you do in season two, for that matter? But it's just a little more necessary right now. The pitch to Yogi, he hit on the ground, he hit down a Chacon, and the second baseman field of the ball, and through to Coleman, and Yogi was out at first. And so the Yankees in the first inning, no runs, one hit, and a man left on. We move now into the top of the East second inning here at Yankee Stadium, the second game of the World Series. A nothing to nothing score, and Frankie Robinson will come to bat. Robinson was up twice officially yesterday with no hits. In the season, he batted 323. He was second in the National League, rather third in the National League, and home runs with 37. He was second in the league in runs batted in with 124. He was second in the matter of a stolen bases with 21 and he was third in the matter of two base hits when he had 33. So Robinson up batting right handed and the Yankees are going to play him all oh, straight away. They haven't shifted one way or another. Robinson is up close to the plate standing very close to it as Ralph Terry pitches. He pitched to Robinson. He hit foul. That's down toward the seats the box seats beyond third base. And that's no balls and a strike on Robinson. Ralph Terry certainly has been a good pitcher for the Yanks this year. He won 16 and lost three. He was second in the league in that respect in the matter of winning percentage. And Arroyo was third. So the Yankees had three top men right at the top of the pitching list. Robinson hit a high fly ball back of shortstop. And Quebec is moving into the outfield. And he caught the ball. And Robinson is out. The score is... The Cincinnati Reds, nothing, and the New York Yankees, nothing, with one out on the top of the second inning. Gordy Coleman up. Coleman was three times at bat yesterday in the first game with no hits. During the season, Coleman batted 287, had 26 home runs and 87 runs batted in. He had 27 doubles. Batting left-handed, standing squared away at the plate. As Ralph Terry starts his action, makes his pitch, strike one call with the fastball. No balls, one strike. Terry fires. Ball bounced down to Quebec, who moved in, grabbed it on the big bounce. The throw to first, and Coleman is out at first base. Scourin had a feel for the bag with his foot then. He was, Coleman was almost safe there as Scourin had a feel for the bag with his foot, you know, before he found it, which is kind of odd as doesn't happen very often, but once in a while you become a little confused. Now the battle will be Post. Post had one hit and three turns yesterday for a 3.33 average. The pitch to Wally, he struck at the curve and he missed for strike one. During the season, Post batted 294 with 20 home runs, 57 runs batted in, and he had 15 two base hits. And Wally very often came through to help the Reds in their determined pennant drive. 
So Terry winding again, throws. That's outside with the slider. One ball, one strike, one and one. The score is nothing to nothing with two out on the top of the second inning of the second game here at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees have no runs in one hit. The Reds no runs and no hits. The Reds haven't put a man to bases yet. Post. Post hit the ball off the glove of the third baseman. He's safe at first base. Has scour and failed. Uh, well, his foot may have come off the bag, but Boyer made another great play, knocking down a line drive, and he knocked the ball over to Kubek. And Kubek picked the ball up, shot the throw to first base, and darn near got the man at first. The body of Scourin rather blocked us off from sight. So it goes as a base hit, a base hit for Wally Post. You know, he hit the ball well. He hit a hard line drive. That's the Reds' first hit. Brings up Gene Freeze now with Post on first base, two out in the top of the second inning. The score, nothing to nothing. Freeze was up three times yesterday with no hits. Last season, he batted 277, 26 home runs, 87 runs batted in, and 27 doubles. As Terry hesitates, pitches, there's a line drive. Foul, foul. Six inches foul outside the third, the left field foul line. A line drive on the part of Freeze that came almost being an extra base hit. Six inches foul. Down. It was a line drive over the third baseman's head. It was virtually fair as it started out and then at the last moment curved around and landed foul. And the umpire down there, Shag Crawford, was very decisive and very alert and quick in his decision and gave it a quick punch outside. The pitch to Freeze has a, another foul past third base. And that was hit fairly well, but not as well as his first drive. So there are two away for the Reds in the second inning with Post on first base. That Boyer has played great defensive ball, certainly top defensive ball for the Yankees. And of course, yesterday, uh, the Yankees are certainly at their best. The 25-game winner at his best and a good team at their best. The pitching there now to Freeze is strike three as Freeze took a cut and missed and struck out for the second strikeout for Terry in the ball game. And in the top of the second, the Cincinnati Reds, no runs, one hit, and a man left on. And at the end of the... An inning and a half, the score is Cincinnati nothing, and the New York Yankees nothing. Say, how lucky do you feel right now? Well, you may be luckier than you think. Chrysler Corporation is offering 180 brand new cars free during October open house, and one of them may be yours. It's an open invitation to see the new cars and sign up to win one. If you own a car, any make or model, any year, you could be one of the lucky winners. To qualify, all you have to do is come in and register with any authorized dealer who sells Plymouth, Valiant, Dodge, Lancer, Chrysler, or Imperial. That's all there is to it, but remember, you have to register by October 31st. Visit your dealer during October open house. Why not tonight? You may win a brand new 62 car from Chrysler Corporation. Free car offer void in Nebraska, Wisconsin, Florida, Canada, and wherever else prohibited by law. The batters in the bottom half of the second inning for the New York Yankees will be Johnny Blanchard, Elston Howard, and Bill Scourin. Johnny Blanchard coming up was at the plate once yesterday. He went in as a pinch hitter. He didn't have a hit. But Blanchard has been a tremendous man for the Yankees this season in, in many, many ways. Whenever, whenever he was in there, why, he, he did yeoman work for the Yankees. He... Johnny Blanchard batting left-handed. During the season, he batted 305. He had 21 home runs and 54 runs batted in. And he pitched into it. Blanchard now is high outside, way high outside. Ball one. Score nothing to nothing as we move into the bottom of the second. Neither team has scored. Each team has had a hit.
As the pitch made to Blanchard. Now he took a cut and he popped the ball in the air down to Casco at shortstop, who moved in under it, caught it, and Blanchard is out. One away in the bottom of the second inning for the Yankees. The score is nothing to nothing. Each team has had one hit. Elston Howard, who batted 348, second in the American League in batting with that average of 248, had one hit yesterday. And of course, that was the home run that started the Yankees on the way to victory. One run, one homer, one bat run batted in. The pitch to him, he hit a grounder down a freeze, who backed up, gr- grabbed it through to first, and got his man at first. So Howard is up and out. Two away for the Yankees in the bottom of the second. Still no score in the ball game. Bill Scourin, the other home run hitter of yesterday, is up. Yesterday, Scourin went to bat three times with one hit. His one hit was the home run, and that capped the climax for the Reds yesterday. And by the way, the Reds can look with pride on yesterday's game. They played a fine ball game. A fine ball game. Bill Scourin at the plate. He batted 267 during the season with 28 homers, 89 runs batted in. Throw to him by Jay is a little inside low. Ball one. Nothing to nothing still as the game moves along. So Joey Jay's taking the sign from Johnny Edwards, the rookie catcher. The pitch in there now to Scourin is called ball two. That was a curve ball, but it wasn't over. Two or nothing. Playing Scourin straight away. Robinson in left field is not too close to the left field foul line, by the way. He's playing a little over toward left center. A two ball, no strike count on Scourin. With Jay in action, he pitches. Foul ball. That's hit in the upper deck over there to the right. A two ball, one strike count. This fellow's another clutch player. This fellow plays his best when the chips are down, too. Of course, the Yanks have been in so many World Series, they've had a great deal of that experience. But the World Series is always a thrill. No matter how many you're in, it's still a thrill. Two balls, one strike. That's a little low inside with the fastball for Joey, and that's three balls and one strike on Scourer. Three and one. No score in this game. Scoreless game so far. Jay Wines pitches. Ground foul is scour and chase the curve. Three balls, two strikes. Three and two. So Joey takes little time. He's not in a hurry, and he studies his batter, and he tries to pitch with sort of an even pace and an even tempo. Both these fellows do. That's why I say both Jay and Terry are somewhat similar in pitching design. The next throw to Scourin is very high, and that's ball four, and Joey Walker. This will bring up Cleet Boyer, and this fellow will doubtlessly get a big round of applause. He's played tremendous defensive baseball for the Yankees. Yesterday, he had one hit in three turns at bat, a single to right field. So his World Series batting average so far in this series, 333. On the season, he batted 225. He had 11 home runs and 55 runs batted in, 19 doubles and five triples. So Scourin is on first and Cleet Boyer up there. Now Joe Jay checks his runner on first base. Well, he lobbed a throw over to first. Not much on it, but... The throw now to Boyer. is batted in the ground. Casca made a great stop to the second. Man out of second. Another great play. A fine play by Casco. A backhanded stop. Forcing Scour in second. In the second inning, since uh, the New York Yankees, no runs, no hits. One left. And so at the end of two innings, the score is Cincinnati nothing, 
The New York Yankees, nothing. Dodge for 62, the new lean breed of Dodge. All live car. That means dead weight and fat are out. Every ounce that doesn't help strength or performance is gone. What's left is all live weight, road-hugging live weight. With dead weight cut out, acceleration is up as much as 11%. And with dead weight cut out, the Dodge handles gas as if it were rationed. All live car, full size, people size. And the Dodge Dart looks just as live as it acts. It's a car built to follow its long, lean hood. A car with clean, uncluttered lines. See the new lean breed of Dodge for 1962 from Chrysler Corporation. Looks like it's gonna be a Chrysler year. See your Dodge dealer during October Open House. We'll pause here 30 seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? Saratoga Vichy with the yellow label. It outsells all the rest. The genuine Vichy with the yellow label. Tastes better tonight. Feel better tomorrow. Saratoga with the yellow label. What's the score when you want to mix with the very best? That's easy. Look for the bottle with the famous yellow label, Saratoga Vichy. WGY Schenectady. Johnny Edwards, the catcher, batting left-handed, leading off the top of the third inning. As Ralph Terry is about to pitch, he does. And Edwards bounced a slow roller out to Terry, who moved in, fielded the ball, the pitcher threw to first. Edwards is out at first. We didn't have even an opportunity there of telling you that Edwards is from Columbus, Ohio, 23 years old. A rookie catcher just came up in the middle of the season. On the season, he batted 186, but he hit two home runs. And one of the home runs he hit started the Reds in their winning victory in Chicago. Uh... The day that they eventually won the pennant. Now, Joey Jay is coming up, getting a nice hand. This season, he won 21 and lost 10. Warren Spahn won 21 also. So, between them, they uh, led the league in the most number of victories with 21 apiece. And Jay pitched a total of 247 in the third innings, allowing 217 hits with 102 runs. The pitch to him now is ball one and low inside. All right, this is the third inning at Yankee Stadium, the second game of the World Series. The score is nothing to nothing. Jay took the curveball in there. That's strike one. One ball, one strike. The Cincinnati Reds have had no runs and one hit. The New York Yankees have had no runs and one hit. As Ralph Terry pitches again, there's a fly ball out along the line in left field. Yogi Berra over to the line, made the catch, and... Joey Jay is out. Two away for the Reds in the third inning. Score is still nothing to nothing. With Elio Chacon coming up for his second appearance. The first time up, he forced Barrett to go back in deep left field. As a matter of fact, this young man at the plate who substituted for or is substituting for the injured blasting game who jammed his index finger of his right hand in yesterday's fielding practice, although he played with the injured digit. Chacon has hit the hardest ball of the game so far in this game. He pitch outside low, a curve ball, ball one. He hit the ball quite well. He hit the ball about 385 feet out there in left field, and Barrow went back and caught it. Two away for the Reds in the third. No score is yet for either team. There's a ground foul, a hard-hit ground foul, a line drive. Actually, hit past third and hit the box seats and bounced onto the playing field, and Yogi Berra is clearing the field of the ball. So there's one ball, one strike. It's a beautiful day here at Yankee Stadium. Just a typical, wonderful World Series day. This huge crowd sitting watching this game, waiting for the break, the thrill, and the drama. That's why it's a great sport. Terry throwing again. That's a little high outside. Two balls and a strike on Chacon. The Reds have had one man to base. Wally Post single in the second inning. The Yankees have had two men to base. Richardson who singled and Scourin who walked. But not in the same inning. So Terry fires again. Chacon took it a little high. Three balls and a strike. Three and one. Nothing to nothing to score. Two out in the top of the third. 
Elio Chacon from Caracas, Venezuela. The pitch to him, high, ball four, as he tossed his bat away and started for first base. This brings up Betty Casco. Casco, the first time at bat, struck out. Today, there are certainly a couple of pitchers pitching, and uh, that was true yesterday when Ford and O'Toole were pitching, too. The next throw, there's a, a foul rolled over into the Yankee bench. No balls and a strike on Casco. What I mean by that is, yesterday, if there was Whitey Ford with power and skill, O'Toole with power, I might say, and skill, perhaps not as much experience as Ford, but nevertheless, who pitched a beautiful game. Today, two fine pitches moving along, both of them trying to get the edge. The throw now is a pitch out outside high, and that's ball one and strike one. They had a, the Yankees probably had a notion that the Reds were going to, going to put on a hit-and-run play or that Chacon might try to steal second with the no-ball, no one-strike count. They wasted a pitch, in other words. They threw high outside, but it was a pitch out. One ball, one strike, then on Casco. Batting right-handed as he stands in the center of the box. There's a foul that's back up into the upper deck behind the home plate. It's a one-ball, two-strike count. There's no score in this second game as yet. Two men out for the Reds in the third inning with Chacon on first base. I might add that so far as it's gone, the Reds have been shut out for 11 and two-thirds innings in this World Series. Another pitch. Strike three as Casco chased a low-breaking curve outside and struck out. And so in the third inning, the Cincinnati Reds, no runs. No hits and a man left on. And so at the end of two and a half innings, the score is the Cincinnati Reds nothing and the New York Yankees nothing. Lancer, one of the new breed of Dodge and livelier than ever for 62. Dead weight has been engineered out. Every pound is live weight, road hugging live weight. Acceleration is up, gas consumption down. This new lean breed of Dodge is simplified inside and out. The starter motor, for example, has 27 less parts, yet it works quieter and better than ever. Electrical circuits have been simplified. You'll go 32,000 miles between major lube jobs. Less maintenance, easier maintenance. It's a lean, clean car with the accent on the front end. Lancer for 62. One of the new lean breed of Dodge from Chrysler Corporation. Looks like it's gonna be a Chrysler year. See your Dodge Lancer dealer during October Open House. Here at the Yankee Stadium, we're going into the bottom half of the third inning. Of course, both men, both teams have men out with injuries. Darrell Johnson, the Cincinnati catcher, is out with it as he aggravated the injury to his side. Flashing game out with an injury to his index finger. Mickey Mantle out also, of course, with the now his... Well, I might say the almost historic abscess that will make baseball history. One time, you know, Babe Ruth had an abscess on his right arm, and he had a miss uh, part of the series, which we played in the 1921 World Series, I believe. And uh, he was out for part of the series. So there have been some injuries to the Stars. Mickey Mantle has been affected a lot. Ralph Terry batting now, and the pitch to him is inside. Ball one. Uh, Terry is batting 227, and... Uh, it's not a bad average for a pitcher. That's through the courtesy of Bob Wolf, who is my associate here, and this who knows Terry pretty well. This Ralph Terry. Joey J stands there taking signs from Edwards. Uh, Jay in action. He cut loose again. There's a pop-up out there to Chacon. Over towards second. Chacon moved over, made the catch, and Terry is up and out. One away in the third inning for the Yankees. The score is nothing to nothing. The Yankees have no runs. One hit. No errors. The Cincinnati Reds, no runs. One hit. No errors. They're exactly even in totals. Both teams have had two men left on base. Both teams have had a single and a base on balls. This is Richardson, who had a single in the first inning up there now, with one out in the third. The pitch to this right-handed batter, low inside. Bobby Richardson, who had three hits yesterday and one so far today. So Richardson actually has had four hits and five turns at bat in this series so far. 
See Frankie Crosetti down there coaching at third. He has played in and coached in a total of 20 World Series. His total World Series checks or the total of them around $116,000. A pitch in there to Richardson who took a shot at that, popped it out in the short center. Chacon is going out in the short center, caught the ball, and Richardson is out. Two away for the Yankees in the third inning. The score, nothing to nothing. Tony Kilbeck up. Tony forced Richardson in the first inning when he hit the ball down to Chacon, who played it to Casco, and Richardson was out at second. Tony batting left-handed. We said yesterday a little taller than you would suppose. This fellow is well over six. Well over six feet. As Jay pitches to Quebec outside high. Ball one. I shared the locker with uh, Quebec when I came back here for Old Timers Day about a month ago. And that's why I know he was so tall because I thought he was a shorter man. And when I uh, spoke to him and talked to him, I... Uh, I'm five feet, uh, around five feet eleven, and I was just about up a little over his shoulders. As Jay is in action again, he pitches, and that's a, he threw his screwball, but it, it was inside, and that's two balls and no strikes, two or nothing. The screwball is thrown by a right-hander with the reverse twist of the wrist. Uh, the curve, you twist the wrist by to the right with the right-hander at the last-minute snap. If you throw a screwball, you twist it to the left with a reverse twist. Two balls and no strikes, two or nothing. So Jay is whining again, pitching. That's strike one as he just caught the outside edge. A very nice, a very nice pitch with that one. That his control was pinpoint perfect with that. No score as yet. It's a nothing and nothing ball game. With Joey in action, he wheeled around and he let loose. Strike two. He got the next one in there. Two balls, two strikes, two and two. The score is nothing to nothing. The Yankees and the Cincinnati Reds. So Joey Jay came up and over. He pitches. Quebec missed for strike three. And that's Joey's first strikeout. And the Yankees are out in the bottom of the third inning. And that inning for the Yankees, no one to base. And so at the end of the third inning, the score is the Cincinnati Reds, nothing. The New York Yankees, nothing. You know, the only thing more exciting than the World Series is your first look at the new cars. And this year, Chrysler Corporation makes it more exciting than ever. 180 brand new cars are offered free during October open house. One of them could be yours. 30 Imperials, 30 Chryslers, 30 Dodge Darts, 30 Lancers, 30 Plymouths, and 30 Valiants. If you own a car, any make or model, any year, all you have to do to qualify is stop in and register with any authorized Plymouth, Valiant, Dodge, Lancer, Chrysler, or Imperial dealer. But this is important. You must register during October open house, and that ends October 31st. Why not see your dealer tonight? Free car offer void in Nebraska, Wisconsin, Florida, Canada, and wherever else prohibited by law. Well, the meat of the Reds' batting order is coming up in the fourth inning. Pinson, Robinson, and Coleman. As Beta Pinson will come to the plate. The Reds' hitters in this series, as yet, have not been too potent. Post has had two hits, and Casco has had one. Post had a hit yesterday, and he had another one in the second inning today. And, of course, Casco had his in the first inning yesterday. But uh, Pinson and Robinson and Coleman have been held hitless so far. Also, Freeze and, and uh, Chacon and Blastingame and the others. So, Pinson is up at the plate now, leading off in the top of the fourth inning. The score is nothing and nothing as we move into the fourth. So, Ralph Terry, the right hander for the Yankees, is taking the signs from Elston Howard. The Yankee team has shifted to the right. Left field is wide open behind third. Yogi Berra is in left center. The pitch now to Pinson is a strike. That's a fastball at the top of the strike zone. Quebec, the shortstop, is over towards second. And Boyer, the third baseman, is playing in. Way in in front of third. As Ralph Terry is in action again. That's a pitch low. One ball, one strike. That looked like a screwball. Sort of broke down and away from Pinson. 
One ball, one strike, one on one. Pinson is the left-handed batter, standing right, even with the plate. Dips his knees a little, keeps pumping that bat. As Terry is winding again, pitching. Pinson hit a fly ball out in left field. Berra is moving all, coming in toward the line, and he made the catch, and Pinson is out. Berra cut in diagonally. Now, Pinson doesn't hit out there too much. That was rather a surprise. One away for the Reds in the fourth inning. The score is still nothing to nothing. The Reds with no runs, one hit. The Yankees with no runs, one hit. Robinson up. Robinson popped up to Quebec in the second inning. Batting right-handed. And now the Yankees have shifted to the left on Robinson. As Terry is winding, pitching to Robinson. Robinson grounded a ball down to Boyer at third, and the ball hit him, bounced away from him, and Robinson is safe at first base. We'll await the official scorer's decision. And Boyer is charged with an error. That is the first error of the series by either team, as a matter of fact. Boyer tried to play that on what we call the short hop, the short bounce, or in between bounces. And uh, a little difficult to play it that way. The batter is Coleman now. Coleman took the curve ball for strike one call. Robinson on first, one out, the top of the fourth inning. There is no score in the game so far. Nothing to nothing. Coleman drove a long drive in right field. The ball is still going and gone. It's a home run for Coleman. As Coleman drove a long home run into the right center field seat. The Reds are ahead two to nothing. So the Reds have dented the scoring ice, you might say, as Coleman tagged along with Put the Reds out in front, two to nothing, with one out in the fourth inning. That was well hit. So Robinson scored ahead of Coleman. Coleman hit his home. A long blast. Now Terry is pitching to Post. Post took strike one. Paul, that was right in there. Posted a ground foul. He bounced it against the backstop. No balls and two strikes. So the Cincinnati Reds are leading two to nothing. One out in the fourth inning. And while he took his cut, he missed, and that is strike three as Post struck out, swinging at a breaking ball. Now, a breaking ball can be anything from a curve to a screw ball to a slider. Sometimes they're a little hard to identify here in the press box. Two away for the Reds in the fourth inning. The Reds are leading two to nothing. They have two runs, two hits. The Yankees, no runs, and one hit. Gordy Coleman of Rockville, Maryland, talked one. So Terry winding again, pitching. Post hit a ground ball down to Quebec. Quebec came up with it, got a throw off, and, or rather, Freeze, pardon me, Freeze at the ball down to Quebec. Quebec threw Freeze out at first base. And so in the fourth inning, Cincinnati scored two runs on one hit, one New York error, and there was no one left on. And so at the end of three and a half innings, the score is Cincinnati 2 and the New York Yankees nothing. What's the word on the new cars from Chrysler Corporation? What's the word you hear? The word on the new Lancer is GT, a brand new Lancer model with the handling and look of a sports car. GT, a car that will corner level, stop fast, and respond like a jackrabbit. It's all live weight. The GT has bucket seats that adjust individually. The carpeting goes from door to door. The leather grain vinyl interiors will keep their good looks for years to come. See the new GT and all the exciting Lancer models from hard tops to station wagons. Lancer for 62 from Chrysler Corporation. 
simplicity. And they're simply beautiful. Looks like it's gonna be a Chrysler year. See your Dodge Lancer dealer during October open house. Here in the Yankee Stadium, the World Series is moving into the bottom half of the fourth inning of the second game. And the Cincinnati Reds are leading two to nothing. Roger Maris will be the first batter for the Yankees in the bottom of the fourth, followed by Yogi Berra and then Johnny Blanchard. Quebec was on first base in the first inning when Roger Maris forced Quebec at second base, the second baseman, Chacon, to Casco. So Maris up there batting left-handed now. I guess Roger Maris, you might say, is the most talked about man in baseball today, wouldn't you? And Joey Jay is concentrating on Maris. He starts his pitch. Maris tried to punt a ball, and he popped a foul into the Reds' bench. Strike one. No balls, one strike, nothing in one. Chacon, the second baseman, is playing five feet, five to ten feet back in the outfield, in right field. The next pitch to Maris is outside. One ball, one strike, one and one. Coleman is playing a very deep first base. Casco has shifted to the back edge of the infield, almost behind second. And Freeze is playing, well, he's off of third, but not way off of it. The outfield is shifted to the right. Uh, Jay swings into action again. Now he pitches. No good. He missed outside with the curve. Two balls and a strike. Two and one on Maris. So Maris stands squared away at the plate. Has that bat back waiting as the next pitch made is high and outside, and that is ball three. Three and one on Roger. Three and one. So Jay is just busy preparing a ball, standing in the back slope of the mound with his glove under his arm. And Maris is adjusting his helmet. Jock and Conlon, the umpire, called for time until everybody was ready. Here we go. Outside high, ball four, and Maris has taken a base on ball. Maris on first base, and Yogi Berra is waiting outside the batter's box. The score is two to nothing. The Cincinnati Reds leading. The Cincinnati Reds have two runs, two hits, no errors. The Yankees, no runs, one hit, one error. No one out in the bottom of the fourth. Might add that Gordy Coleman's home run was the first hit by a left-handed batter in the series. Joey Jay pitches to Barra now. That's outside. Ball one. You know, whenever we speak of Gordy Coleman here in the Yankee Stadium, you have a, an inclination to say Jerry Coleman, you know, who used to play here. And you have to stop to think to yourself because it, phonetically, they, it's, it's Gordy and Jerry. It's somewhat similar, you know. Jay is standing there stationary, taking the signals from Johnny Edwards. As he checks his runner on first, he pitches. There's a ball hit out of right field, and there goes the home run. And that's into the right field, not the bleachers, but the reserve section of the right field pavilion. As Yogi Berra hit his home run. And that breaks, that not only ties the score, but it breaks some records. As Maris scores ahead of him, the score is tied at 2-2. Two two. Maris waited at the home plate, of course, to congratulate Yogi. And that ties it up again now. A 2-2 two two ball game. So 
So Joey Jay is facing Johnny Blanchett. He pitched to this left-handed batter, strike one. Uh, Vera really powdered that one. That was well hit. And that was his 12th World Series home run. Another throw. Johnny Blanchard took that one high from Joey J. One ball, one strike, one and one. Well, of course, that uh, Vera has some records that he just adds to, like the most hits in a series, you see. So that just adds another hit to his 68 that he already has, I believe. And that's 69, if I'm not mistaken. Jay whining again. Delivering a ground ball down to Coleman, who grabbed it. He's handing off to Jay, and the man is out at first. Blanchett out at first, Coleman to Jay, or otherwise the first baseman to the pitcher. Elston Howard coming up now. The score is 2-2. Two to two. The Yankees have two runs, two hits, one error. The Cincinnati Reds, two runs, two hits, and no errors. So the game moves along at a rather even keel as far as statistics are concerned. Elston Howard, who banged that home run yesterday, is up there. He was thrown out by Gene Freeze in the second inning today. He's been up once. One out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Score two to two. Joey J pounded the ball in his glove a couple of times. Edwards has been looking over at the Reds bench. The Reds are playing straight away now on Howard with... Jay working, he pitches, the curve is good. Strike one call as Jay caught the outside edge with that hook. Generally in professional baseball, a curve is just described as a hook. Uh, and it's more or less identified by the individuals because the catcher knows what type of thing the pitcher throws. So just say when you throw your curve, you throw your hook. Another pitch, there's the fastball. That's hit foul right near us up here. No balls, two strikes, nothing in two. We're a little bit exposed, and I hope that Bob Wolf, who is broadcasting with me, is a good catcher up here. Can reach out and spear those fouls, if you will. One away in the bottom of the fourth inning. Score tied at two to two. Jay bends forward, taking the signs from Johnny Edwards. The Cincinnati Reds infield ready, especially on the left side. As Jay is in action, he pitches. The foul ball hit the backstop. Strike two. Still no balls, two strikes. Nothing in two. Now Jay has called Johnny Edwards out to him to have a little chat, perhaps about signals or the type of thing to be thrown, or perhaps Jay wants to, perhaps Jay wants to waste a curve or waste a fastball or a screwball or some type of pitch. Maybe he'll say, well, hold your, little, you hold your target a little outside or something like that. Nothing in two. Uh, Jay in action again, and he throws, and the curve, that's low, and that's one ball and two strikes, one and two. One thing they don't talk about, and which is a misconception, is something some of the people in the stand or where they're going later. Pitching, pitching is a very serious business, those fellows who are pitching. And, and uh, when they talk to the catcher, they talk about their business. Strangely how things can parallel in baseball. One thing can parallel another when you, when you think that uh, in the top of the fourth inning, Robinson was safe on an error. And then Coleman banged a home run. And then in the bottom of the fourth inning, Maris walked and Barra homered. So uh, the homers came each time with a man on. The throw to the plate, inside high, and that's ball two. Two balls, two strikes, two and two. And prior to those two homers, no left-handers had had hits in the, in the series. And then both of them chipped in with round trippers. Jay goes again, and the... Curve is high, the high slider. Jay thought he had the man struck out. He was walked down the back slope of the mound out toward the second base. A little bit disappointed. Jocko, however, is in, as we say here, in a position to judge and should know. As the batter started a swing, held up the bat in mid-swing or before he cracked his wrists on it, you might say, or broke his wrists. So 
Jock O'Connor judged it was ball three. Three and two. Red's infield on the left side is back now from Howard. So Joey stands with arms dangling, looking at the catcher, taking his signs. Now he's winding. Now he's pitching. Missed outside for ball four. Brings up Bill Scourer now with Howard on first base. One man out in the fourth. Jay made a very nice try on that pitch. He tried to keep the ball right over the outside edge and just missed outside with it. So it's Howard on first base, scouring at bat. Scouring walked in the second inning and then was forced at second by Cleet Boyer. Scouring batting right handed. Of course, Bill hit his home run yesterday. He has one home run, one run batted in so far in the series. As the pitch is made now to Scouring, who took the pitch inside. Ball one. So the score is two to two. Two ball, uh, two to two with two hits each. On the batter, one ball, no strikes. Post, the right fielder, is playing in deep right, and it's really right center. He's not near the line down in right field there. Pinson is playing just to the left of the second base bag out there in center field. Robinson is playing a normal left field. And Jay cut loose again. The curve is hit through the middle, and Chacon flipped it off to Casco. The throw is the first. A double play. And the fourth inning wound up on the note of a DP. Chacon to Casco to Coleman. In the inning, the Yankees had two runs, one hit, and no one left on. And so at the end of the fourth inning, the score is the Cincinnati Reds, two, the New York Yankees, two. Don't miss your chance to win a brand new 62 Chrysler Corporation car. Stop in at your dealers now and sign up to win one during October open house. Plymouths, Valiants, Dodge Darts, Lancers, Chryslers, Imperials. 180 brand new cars are offered free and one of them may be yours. If you own a car, any make or model, any year, all you have to do to qualify is come in, see the complete rules, and register with any authorized dealer who sells Plymouth, Valiant, Dodge, Lancer, Chrysler, or Imperial. That's all there is to it, and you may win one of 180 beautiful 1962 Chrysler Corporation cars. But be sure to register at your dealers by October 31st. You can't win unless you do. Free car offer void in Nebraska, Wisconsin, Florida, Canada, and wherever else prohibited by law. Looks like it's gonna be a nice year. For station identification. You're safe at home and dining out too when you order Saratoga Vichy. Make sure you're mixing with the best. Ask for Saratoga Vichy. WGY Schenectady. Johnny Edwards, leading, leading off the top of the fifth inning, took a cut at Terry's first pitch of a curve ball, and he missed it for strike one. Edwards, the first time up, hit back to the pitcher, who threw him out at first base. The score is two to two. Score two to two. The pitch now to Edwards, low inside, or rather more low than inside, though. One ball, one strike. The Cincinnati Reds have two runs, two hits, two men left on, and no errors. The New York Yankees, two runs, two hits, two men left on, and they have one error. As Ralph Terry throws, there's the curve, and it's hit on a half line to the Richardson, the second baseman, who grabbed it, and Edwards is out. Now, that ball wasn't hit as hard as it may have seemed. It took the trajectory of a line drive, but it was not actually a line drive. As Richardson made the catch, and Johnny Edwards is out, one out in the top of the fifth inning, and Joey Jay coming up. Joe Jay coming up. Jay flied out to Yogi Berra back there in the third inning. So there's one out for the Reds in the fifth inning. The score is 2-2 two to two here at Yankee Stadium. As Ralph Terry pitches, Jay batting left-handed took the curve in there for strike one call. Boyer is playing him in a little bit. The third baseman has moved in on, on Joey. Quebec is playing a fairly deep short. The next throw, Jay hit hard at the ball, but he missed it, and that's strike two. No balls, two strikes. Boyer is off at third now. When I say off at third, I mean he's down towards second base a bit. He's playing third. The pitch to Jay took a cut and he missed for strike three. That's the fifth strikeout for Ralph Terry. 
And two Reds are out in the fifth inning. The score is two to two. And Chacon is coming to the plate. He's played nice ball so far today. He made a couple of nice plays, a couple of nice force plays at second. Started a double play for the Reds. That double play the Reds made there in the bottom of the fourth was their second in the series so far. Ralph Terry is studying his batter, ready to pitch. Delivers. The curve is looped out back of short, and that's falling in there for a hit. The Chacon dropped the single in the short left center. That's twice he's been on base now. Chacon from Caracas in Venezuela. The little man will only say two or three sentences in English. He, he keeps an American uh, Spanish translator with him all the time. I mean, a book. And uh, tries to speak from that. This is Pasco up there now. The pitch to Eddie. Eddie took a strike, a fastball in there. Score is two to two. Two out in the top of the fifth inning here at Yankee Stadium. Ralph Terry is checking his man on first base. Now he pitches. Casco hit the ball to the middle, and that's in the center. That's a base hit. Chacon is trying for third base. The throw is over to third, but he's in there safely. Maris made the throw to third. Casco's on first. Chacon is on third. This will bring up Beta Pinson, who so far in the series has been hitless. Chacon is on third. Casco is on first. The score is two to two. The Reds have two runs and four hits. The Yankees have two runs and two hits. And Beta Pinson batting. Runners at first and third. Two out in the fifth inning. As Ralph Terry pitches. As the curve is low inside, and that's one ball, no strikes on Pinson. Third baseman's playing in. Pinson missed, and that's strike one. One ball, one strike. One and one. Despite the fact that there are two out, well, a boy is playing in, but he would have to play in. This this boy at the plate, Pinson, can fly. And should he top a ball down the third base way, and a boy is playing back, Pinson could beat it. That's a, that's a... And the man is safe at the plate as the ball got by the catcher. It was a pass ball or a wild pitch. We'll have to wait for the official score decision. And Chacon slid into the plate under the throw of Howard. Howard did not exactly know where to throw the ball. When he retrieved the ball, he at first thought he might have to throw to second. He was prepared to throw to second, but the pitcher came in. He threw the ball to the pitcher. Uh, the and uh, Ch- he dove at Chacon. He took a dive himself at Chacon. The pitcher was at the plate, but but Howard elected to dive at Chacon, and Chacon beat him to the plate. No, he, uh, the catcher did not actually see Chacon coming in. There has been no decision as we've had whether that was a pass ball or not. So the Reds have another run, a leading 3-2. to two. Pinson bounced a foul against the box seats beyond the Yankee bench. Casco went to second on the play, so the Reds have a man on second with two out on the fifth and are leading three to two. We did not get immediately the official scorer's decision as to whether that was a pass ball or a wild pitch. It bounced off the glove of the catcher. So on Elston Howard's pass ball, Chacon scored. The Reds are leading three to two, two out in the fifth inning. Terry pitches again. Pinson took a swing, and he missed for strike three as Pinson struck out. And so in the fifth inning, the Cincinnati Reds scored one run on two hits, a pass ball, and they had a man left on. And so at the end of four and a half innings, the score is the Cincinnati Reds three, the New York Yankees two. The first half of today's World Series broadcast was brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation. The second half of this game is being brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Whitey Ford, six strikeouts yesterday, brought his World Series record to 69. Going into the series, he had 63, a fact you can find in the Gillette World Series Encyclopedia, a handy pocketbook that I'm using right now to help me announce the game. 
It's a Gillette exclusive. Comes free when you buy the adjustable razor at the regular price of $1.95. This Gillette book is loaded with baseball highlights and sidelights. 256 pages brimming with facts, figures, sport cartoons, and good reading. Contains line scores of every series game. Lifetime statistics of every man who ever played on a series. And more, much more. It's yours free with the Gillette Adjustable Razor. The adjustable has nine different settings. One just right for your combination of skin and beard. And it comes with a supply of those remarkable Super Blue Blades. Get your free World Series Encyclopedia with the Gillette Adjustable Razor and Super Blue Blades for only $1.95. I call that a bargain. Well, I am pleased in presenting to you my colleague, Bob Wolf, who has done such a tremendous job broadcasting for the Minnesota Twins. Bob? Thank you, Wade Hoyt. And as we move into the bottom half now of inning number five, it's Cleet Boyer leading off against Joey Jay. The pitch is low and in the dirt, skipping away from Johnny Edwards for ball one. Score of the ball game, Cincinnati three and the New York Yankees two. And up to this point, the Reds have had three runs, four hits, and the Yankees two runs, two hits, and they've committed an error. And it was heads up and alert play as Chacon came racing in as the ball bounded out of Howard's mitt to score the tie-breaking run. Here's the pitch coming up to Boyer, and he watches it come in low. Count now is ball two to Boyer, who went into a force out in the second inning to be followed by the pitcher then the top of the Yankee batting order. The Yankees two hits so far. Bobby Richardson's is fourth in the series and Yogi Berra with a home run to right field with Roger Maris on base to account for New York's two runs. The Reds two runs in the fourth on Coleman's homer and then Chacon scored the tie-breaking run to make it 3-2. Boyer takes inside for a ball and the count now is 3-0. The outfield is playing Boyer straight away, just slightly toward left. And there's very little breeze right now at Yankee Stadium. It's a very mild, pleasant, and sunny afternoon. Perfect day for this game. Tall right-hander Joey Jay in the mound as a count now of ball three to Boyer. Right-hander starts the windup. And the 3-0 pitch on the way is low and away. And Boyer draws a walk as he now cuts down to first base. That will bring up the New York Yankee pitcher, Ralph Terry, who's been up once and has popped high in the air to Chacon, the second baseman. They'll be talking about that big play in the top of the inning for some time to come. With Pinson at the bat as the ball skipped out of Howard's mitt for a pass ball, Chacon took off from third as Reggie Otero, the third base coach, waved him on. And Howard cocked his arm to throw toward second, appearing for the moment as if he did not see the man breaking in from third. Then suddenly it dawned on him that Chacon was streaking for the plate, and Howard raced toward the plate, made a dive for the fleet speedster coming in from third, but Chacon slid in safely with the run. Here's the pitch to Terry, and it's punted foul for strike one. And Gordy Coleman, who was coming in from the first base that time, charged in from first within 15 feet of home plate. You can hear the roar of the crowd here. They were aroused as Coleman looked like a sprinter coming in from first base right to the plate as he charged in in anticipation of the bunt. So it's strike one to Terry. Boyer on first. Here's the pitch, and this one is swung on. There's a pop-up going to short right field. Chacon goes back, and he takes it just about five to ten feet inside the line. Boyer stays put at first base as Terry pops up. And there's one out and one on as Bobby Richardson, who was singled and popped up himself, now steps up for the third time. Bobby Richardson now steps in. On a third, Gene Freeze has moved in a bit, just about three or four feet off the infield grass there. Casco and Chacon at double play depth. The score of the ball game, 3-2 in favor of Cincinnati. Richardson, the batter, Boyer on first, there's one down. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Jay takes a look toward first, toward the runner. Then comes in with the pitch, and there goes the runner. There's a ground ball going at to Casco. Over to second, it's too late. Back to first, it's wide. And they're safe at both bases.
Freddie Hutchinson is going out to protest to Augie Donatelli. As on the play, Boyer was off and running. A grounder went out to Casco, oh, just about five or six feet from second base, so that the ball was not hit too hard. And Casco got the ball over to Chacon, but as Boyer was running, he slid in, beat the throw to second base just by an eyelash. And then the relay throw from Chacon to Coleman was late and a bit wide of the bag as Richardson was safe at first. Freddie Hutchinson rushed out for a closer interpretation of the play and apparently satisfied. As now moved back off the uh, infield and is going back to the dugout. It scored as a fielder's choice on the play as the Yankees this time cashed in on the break with Boyer running on the pitch and therefore he was unable to get into second just barely ahead of Casco's flip to Chacon and Chacon rushing as he saw those flying feet come into second base came in wide to Coleman who had to get off the base on the outfield side so there are now two runners aboard the batter is Tony Kubek and the pitch is swung on and missed for strike one There's one away, runners on first and second. And strike one to Tony Kubek, who is 0 for 2. With the stretch and the pause by Jay, here's the pitch. And it comes in low, 1 and 1. One and one, the count to Kubek, and on deck it's Roger Maris. There's one away. Boyer on second. Richardson is on first base. Terry, the pitcher, had popped up for the one out. Kubek waits with a one on one count. Here's Jay's next offering. And there's a dribbler going foul just off to the right of home plate. Score of the ball game. The Reds three and the Yankees two. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Jay taking a little more time as he looks in to get the sign. Now the right hander set. As the pause, a look back toward second. The pitch. It's swung on and missed. And Kubek goes out of the strikeout. Jay, this afternoon, has posted two strikeouts, and Kubek has been the victim in both cases. Roger Maris now comes up, two away and two on. And Maris this afternoon went into a force out in the first inning. And then in the fourth, he drew a walk and was on base when Yogi Berra swatted his home run. So Mara steps up now, two on and two away. The pitch swung on and fouled, going over into the New York Yankee dugout. Strike one to Roger Maris. Maris was held hitless in yesterday's ball game. And so far this afternoon, he is 0 for 1 with a walk. The outfield finds Wally Post and Wright playing just on the edge of the cinder path near the 344 foot sign out there. And Pinson is way over in right center. Robinson is in left center field. The count of strike one to Maris. Here's the next pitch. And it comes in wide for a ball. And the count miles 1 and 1. They're giving Maris that left field line with plenty to spare. Maris, a pronounced pull hitter, and they're ganging up on him on the right side as Edwards, the catcher, now goes out to have a few words with Joey Jay. Boyer is on second. Richardson is on first base, and there are two outs in the bottom of the fifth as Cincinnati leads by a score of 3-2 to two in the second game of the World Series. Now Edwards is back behind home plate. Maris awaiting that next pitch. The count now is 1-1. One one. Jay... Poised out there on the mound, all set to work. Right hander to the stretch and the pause, a look back towards second. Here's the pitch, and it comes in high, and the count now is two balls and a strike to Roger Maris. Both these teams have been well scouted going into the World Series competition, and of course, there was an extra chapter, I'm sure, devoted to. Roger Maris and how to pitch to him and Jay is taking plenty of time between pitches knowing that one errant move can be costly for the Reds 
Maris up there with two men aboard. And the Reds are leading by a score of three to two. Count is two balls and a strike. Ready for the next pitch. Here it comes. And it is wide again. And the count now is three to one. Three and one to Roger Maris. Waiting on deck. If Maris draws the walk, is Yogi Berra, who had a two-run homer last time up. And so Jay has to pitch carefully, but he cannot be overly cautious here, or the walk will load the bases. So it's a tough spot for this young fellow. Three and one. Maris the batter, looking out toward the mound. Boyer on second, Richardson on first, two away. Here's a three and one pitch. Swung on and missed. And the count now is three and two. So there'll be action aplenty coming up on the next one. Both runners will be moving. Three and two, two outs. Roger Maris, the batter. You can hear this crowd here, the hum of anxiety and anticipation of what may develop on the next one. And on the mound, Jay has just given the ball a good roughing before putting that glove back on and looking in for the sign. Three and two pitch coming up. It's a big one. All set for now. There's the stretch and the pause. The runners are moving. The pitch. Swung out of miss. The curve falls. Maris goes down to the strikeout. One and a half to fifth. No runs. No hits. No errors. And two are left. The score at the end of five innings. The Reds three. The Yankees two. I'm told the baseball special will pull out early tonight, so the players will have to hustle. Well, they can shave in a hurry. Most of them use those instant lather shave creams. They're fast and convenient. One that's getting a nod from more and more of them is Gillette Foamy, the fastest growing instant lather in the country. Just nudge the nozzle and instantly rich, creamy lather billows out, holds oceans of moisture against your beard. And this full body lather keeps your beard drenched through the whole shave. What's more, Foamy contains K34, the antiseptic that destroys harmful bacteria. The wonder more men are switching to Foamy than any other instant lather. Give yourself a lift. Shave clean, shave fast with Gillette Foamy. Latch onto a can. Regular size costs just 79 cents. Giant economy size holds almost twice as much. Costs only 98 cents. With cooling menthol added, same price. From Yankee Stadium in New York City, Bob Wolf speaking with Wade Hoyt. The score, the Reds three, the New York Yankees two, and the batter is Frank Robinson, leading off against Ralph Terry. Terry winds, the first pitch is high and inside, and the count now is ball one to Robinson, batting in the number four slot for the Reds. He is 0-2, popped up in the second, got aboard on Nero by Boyer in the fourth, and was on base when Coleman tagged the home run in the fourth inning. Pitches high and inside as ball two. Red scored the tie-breaking run in the fifth. After two were away, Chacon singled to a left center field. He moved to third base on Casco's base hit through the middle, and then he scored on a passed ball to give the Reds their three to two edge. Robinson with a ball two count. Here's Terry's next one. And there's a hard hit ball just inside third. Boyer with a dive for it. Has it. Gets up first to first for the out. What a play by Boyer. This Boyer is just amazing in this series. Robinson slashed a hard hit ball just a few feet inside third, Boyum made a head-first dive for a ball, came up with it, scrambled to his feet, and threw Robinson out. Just to add to the list of sensational plays that Boyer has already made in just two games. Batter is Coleman. Brad is buzzing about that one. Boyer pulled two great ones yesterday. There's a foul outside of first off Coleman's bat, and it's strike one. And the amazing thing, Boyer has shown that he can make the plays equally to both his right and his left. He made a great play on Freeze going to his right yesterday, and then on Grant to his left also, this time to his right again on Robinson. Here's the pitch to Coleman, and it's inside, moving Coleman back. Count Niles one and one. Coleman grounded out in the second. He homered into the bleacher seats in right center in the fourth. 
with Robinson aboard. Here's the next pitch to Coleman, and he fouls it back. Count Niles ball, one strike two. The home run by Coleman sailed into these seats just over the extreme left end of the auxiliary scoreboard out there in right center field. Ball that was tagged over 400 feet. Count now, ball one, strike two to Gordy Coleman. One away in the top of the sixth. Score, Reds three, Yankees two. Terry all set to work, gets the sign now from Elston Howard. Coleman in and waiting, he's batting fifth in the batting order. Left-handed batter, here's Terry's next one. And a changeup is missed. Oh, Terry pulled the swing on that one as Coleman went down swinging. Coleman had dug in that time, expecting that Terry would be bearing down, but Terry changed speeds. And that's strikeout number seven, posted by Ralph Terry. As Wally Post, it was an infield hit and is also whipped, steps in now with two away in the top of the sixth inning. Score 3 2, Reds in front. Here comes the pitch. And there's a liner going up to left to the line. It's in there for a base hit, and it hops up against the fence and left. There's Barra going over to field it. And in the second base goes Wally Post. Wally Post with a double. As he looped a drive into left, Barra went over in the corner. The ball took one hop and up against that low barrier that breaks away so sharply from the pole out there and left. Ball carrying back off the barrier there and Post moved in a second with his second hit of the afternoon. So the Reds of a man in scoring position is Gene Freeze. Now it comes up. The throw is made over to first base as Bill Scourin on the appeal to Frank Umont claims that Post missed the bag but the appeal is turned down by the first base umpire. As Post resides now on second base with two away in this top of the sixth. Gene Freeze, who is struck out and grounded out, is now coming up. Score is three to two, and they're going to walk Freeze. There's the intentional pitch wide for ball one. So they're taking no chances on this skilled veteran who hits that long ball as they're walking to bring up the rookie catcher, Johnny Edwards. And there is the intentional walk as ball four now comes in and Freeze cuts down to first base. And Edwards, the youngster who didn't make the starting lineup until just about an hour or so before game time, is now stepping up. He's a left-handed batter. And despite the fact that he is a left-hander against the right-handed Terry, the Yankees are gambling on getting this young fellow out. Post is on second, Freeze is on first, and Edwards, who is rounded out and lined out, is coming up now. Steps in. Score 3-2 the Reds lead. We're in the top of the sixth. Pitch. And there's a ground ball, which is in a right field for a base hit. Here's Post rounding third. Blanchett makes the throw to second. Post scores. Freeze is in a third. And Edwards comes through with a ground single to right. Johnny Edwards found the spot between Richardson and Scourin as he was up to the challenge the Yankees decided to pitch to him and he responded by hitting a clean single in the hole to right field in between Richardson and Scourin scoring post and moving freeze to third base so the Reds now lead by a score of 4-2 to two. and here's Joey Jay who is a switch hitter batting left handed coming up Hoping to keep things alive for Cincinnati. Jay steps in now, left-hander at the plate. Stretching the pause by Terry. The pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Scores 4-2. The Reds lead the New York Yankees with six hits. 2-2 so far for New York. Those are the hit totals in reverse of yesterday's game. The pitch... Swung on a ground ball, moving forward as Richardson to his right. He's up in the throw to first base, fully out. So Jay is retired, and the side is retired in this sixth inning. In this frame, the Reds come up with one run. There were two hits, no errors, and two are left. 
to score at the end of five and a half innings. Cincinnati four, New York two. What a moment. Bill Mazeroski blasting the homer that took all the marbles in last year's series. Listen to this actual play-by-play. Sudden death now, last of the ninth. Nine to nine. Great moments like that. You can live and relive them on the pages of the new Gillette World Series Encyclopedia. Yours free with the purchase of the Gillette Adjustable Razor Set at the regular price of $1.95. What a book. 256 pages containing a history of the World Series since it began. Stories, facts, records, all there for you in this great new pocketbook encyclopedia. Get your Gillette adjustable razor and a dispenser of those sensational super blue blades, all for only a dollar ninety-five, and receive your book free. Yogi Berra will be leading off for New York in the bottom of the sixth, and the fan, the fans here are still buzzing about that base hit by Johnny Edwards, who was a last-minute substitution for Darrell Johnson. Edwards, who had a one eighty-six batting average during the regular season and is only in his third year of pro ball he played collegiate ball earlier at Ohio State came up as the Yankees had walked the man previously to get to him Gene Freeze with two men on and two away it was pumped the single into right field to drive in run number four so he was up to the challenge here's Yogi Berra now all set to face Joey Jay as the right hander winds and the pitch to Berra is a strike in the outside corner, a breaking pitch. Berra, after grounding out on the first inning, laced a long home run deep in the right field seats with Maris on board in the fourth. His 12th World Series home run. Count of strike one to Berra. Here's the windup, and the pitch on the way is a curve, and it's looped in a very short center. Coming in is Pinson, but he can't get it. And it's in there for a base hit. And Pinson juggled the ball as he played it on the hop. Squirted out of his glove, he picked it up, but Barra stayed at first base. It was interesting to note that time that Barra watched a curve, a beautiful curve ball by Jay, as it was breaking down, and actually Barra golfed it up. He stayed with it, but he didn't take a big full cut. He was watching it very carefully as the curve was breaking down. He sort of golfed it up and looped the ball in a short center field. So Barra's on with a single for New York. And the batter now is Johnny Blanchard, who has popped up and has grounded out. Barrett takes his lead off first. The pitch to Blanchard. Swung on, and there's a ball going to short center. Back goes Casco. Still moving. He twists his body around and makes the catch. Casco startled out, looking toward the right field line. Then he twisted his body around and made the catch, looking toward the left field line as he stayed with the ball beautifully. And Barrett move back to first base. So Blanchard is out. Casco moving back oh, 25 feet or so to short center to pull in the pop-up. And that brings up Elston Howard who has grounded out and has walked. Casco has come up with some fine plays in the series. Score of the ball game. Cincinnati 4, the New York Yankees 2 We're in the bottom half of the sixth inning. They're on first, there's one away. Howard the batter. A look toward the runner at first. The pitch to Elston. Swung on a hot grounder, which is taken by Chacon near second. Over to Casco for one. Back to first for two. Beautiful defensive play by Cincinnati as Chacon and a hard hit ball. We're moving to his right. Come up with it over to Casco and back to Coleman for an inning ending double play. And they've uncorked some beauties this afternoon. So in the bottom half, the sixth, the total show. No runs. One hit, no errors, and nobody left. And the score at the end of six innings, Cincinnati four and New York two. You know what is interesting, and I'm sure will come to the attention of you fans who are listening in right now, is the fact that newcomers in the lineup today, as so often happens, have spelled quite a difference in the uh, Reds' play. The man whose positions they have taken, of course, are Sterling, 
ball players in every regard. And naturally, the first line regulars, and because of their ability, that's why they got the jobs. But this afternoon, we have seen Chacon come up with a couple of dazzling plays defensively. And we have seen Johnny Edwards, also a replacement, come up with a big base hit. So it shows that the Reds' bench is certainly doing the job as well as their first-line starters. Now as we move into the seventh inning, here is Elio Chacon, who is coming up to face Ralph Terry. Chacon has fly deep to left. Vera took his long fly back on the uh, cinder path and left back in the first inning. Chacon has walked, and then he's single to left center field. And it was his, his daring and speed which enabled him to come in as the ball bounced out of the mitt of Elston Howard in the fifth inning. Didn't roll too far from the plate, but Chacon got a quick break. And as Howard couldn't quite believe that Chacon might be coming in, Howard first looked to second. Chacon came legging in. Howard then saw the runner. He made a dive for him, but it was too late as Chacon slid in safely with run number three. And there's strike one call to Chacon. We're in the seventh inning of an exciting ball game. The Reds lead 4-2. to two. Ralph Terry on the mound. The pitch, a change-up curve comes in low. And the count now is 1-1. One one. Chacon is followed by Casco and by Pinson. The Yankees are playing Chacon straight away. Just very slightly shaded to left. Maris is just a little bit toward left center. Pitch is low again. The count now is two balls. Strike one. Maris is in the center field this afternoon. Vera is in left, Blanchard in right. Mandel is out. It's operation, post-operation, uh, wound proving a bit too hard. There's a high fly ball to Cohn's bat to deep left. Vera's back in the cinder path, has it. And that's twice that Chacon has flied out to Yogi Berra on that cinder path out there in left. Two long outs off the bat of Chacon. His first time up, but now leading off here in the seventh. And interspersed with those two outs, a walk and a single to left center field. This fellow's not very large, Chacon, but he swings with surprising power. Here's Eddie Casco, who was whiffed twice and singled once. The Yankee bullpen is active now. Here's the pitch. Casco swings, sends a fly ball to left center field. Maris is moving under it, waiting now, and has it, and Casco is out number two. The Yankee bullpen is now active as the Yankees are trailing by a score of four to two. We're in the seventh with two away, and the batter is Veda Pinson, another one of the Red Speed Merchants. There's Blanchard going deep and right. He's still going back, and he's playing right now on the edge of the cinder path and right for Veda Pinson. Batting third in the Reds lineup. Here's the pitch from Terry. And a curve is low in the dirt, skipping right by Howard for ball one. The seventh inning of play, the score of the ball game. Cincinnati four, the New York Yankees two. Pence in the batter, Canna's ball one. Terry all set to work. Third baseman Boyer has come in for Pinson because of Pinson's great speed. Here's the pitch. Pinson swings, and there's a ball which is taken by Scourin just an inch or so off the ground. It was a sinking liner topped, and Scourin went right down almost to the dirt as he made the catch. So in the seventh, there are three up and three down. And the score at the end of six and a half innings, Reds four, Yankees two. Paper made credit card contest winners now leaving for London, Paris, and other world-famous cities. How would you like to fly anywhere, stay anywhere, dine anywhere, and just sign for it? Never get a bill. Well, the world is yours if you win the PaperMate $50,000 credit card contest. You'll fly the finest on TWA Super Jets and just sign for it using your TWA air travel card. You'll stay at luxury hotels like the Royal Hawaiian in Honolulu. Dine at famous restaurants in Paris or Rome. And just sign for it using your Diners Club card. You'll have a car when you want it with your Hertz Rent-A-Car card. Gas when you need it with your Shell credit card. When it's time to pay, just pull out your PaperMate pen and sign for it. Never get a bill. 
Grand prize is $10,000 in credit or cash, 500 other prizes. Get entry blanks and full contest details now wherever paper mate pens are sold. Here now is the bottom half of the seventh inning, and Phil Scourin will be leading off in New York. He walked in the second, hit into a double play in the fourth. A well-executed play from Chacon to Casco to Coleman. So Bill Scourin now steps up to face Joey Jay with the score of the ball game. Cincinnati 4, the New York Yankees 2. There have been four runs, six hits for the Reds, and for the Yankees, two runs, three hits. They've committed one error. Scourin at the plate. Here's the windup by Jay. The first pitch to Scourin is bunted. Foul outside of first. And this bunt was almost in self-protection as Scourin had the bunting idea. He slid the hand up along the bat to bunt, and Jay's pitch came buzzing in on him, shoulder high. And Scourin actually used the bat as a shield as the ball was butted foul. Strike one to Bill Scourin. Now steps outside the batter's box for a moment. Scourin is particularly dangerous here in Yankee Stadium because of his power to all fields. Post is playing him over a little bit toward right center. Now Jay set to work with a one-strike count to Bill Scourin. The wind-up, here comes the pitch, and it's a curve for a called strike, and that one really broke on the outside corner. Strike two to Bill Scourin. Jay steps back off the mound. He's rubbing up the ball. The count of strike two to Scourin. All set to go once again. Here's the sign now from Johnny Edwards. Jay takes a long time looking in toward home plate before starting the windup. Up goes the right arm. Here's the two-strike pitch. Curveball is missed, and Scourin is out on a strikeout. Jay worked very slowly, very carefully and cautiously as he posted strikeout number four, and that brings up Cleet Boyer, who is 0 for 1 and has walked. We cannot see the Yankee bullpen from our broadcasting perch as it's beyond the seats out there and deep right. However, the report has reached us that Arroyo and Daly are limbering up. Now the batter is Boyer. Here's the pitch. And a curve is high for ball one. One away when the bottom half of the seventh inning. Score of the ball game is Cincinnati 4, the New York Yankees 2. And we have seen home runs by both sides today. Coleman with a two-run homer for the Reds. And Barrow with a two-run blast for the Yankees. Here's the pitch coming up to Boyer. He swings and lifts a high fly ball to deep center field. But Pinson is back deep and waiting. And he is there to take it. Two away. And now for the New York Yankees. A pinch hitter coming up. Hector Lopez emerges up out of the dugout. And he will bat for Ralph Terry. Hector Lopez is now stepping in. Lopez was in yesterday's ball game. Was hitless. In two appearances. He's a right-handed batter. Comes up with two outs and nobody on. Good opposite field hitter. Pitch is foul to the right, and it's strike one. So Ralph Terry is out of the game as Hector Lopez is now in as a pinch hitter with two away in the bottom of the seventh. The score 4-2 in favor of Cincinnati over the New York Yankees. The outfield has shifted slightly for Lopez with Post moving a little closer toward that right field line. And Pinson is slightly to right center field. A big hole in left center. Here's the next pitch coming up. Inside and high, moving Lopez back from the plate. On the count now is one and one to Hector Lopez. Two down. Nobody on. Bottom of the seventh inning. Lopez pauses outside the batter's box. Knocks a little dirt out of his spikes. And now he's planting himself once again as he steps back in. Count is one and one to Lopez. Two down, nobody on. 
Jay all set to work. Gets the sign now from Edwards. Right-hander starts the windup. And here's the one-on-one pitch. It's wide, and Lopez startled a move for it. Held back on the swing. Count now is two balls. Strike one. Cincinnati scored first in the ball game. Yankees came back to tie it in the same inning, the fourth. And the Reds have scored single runs in the fifth and sixth to take their 4-2 lead. Here's the 2-1 pitch coming up to Lopez. Inside, and the count now is 3-1. 3-1 to Lopez. Two outs, Bobby Richardson kneeling in the on-deck circle. It's been a bright, sunny afternoon here in New York. And a very exciting contest. 3-1 Three and one to Lopez. Right-handed batter in and waiting. Jay, as the game progresses, working a little more slowly between pitches. Ready for that three and one pitch now. Here it comes. And it's a fastball low as Lopez draws a walk. So the Yankees have a runner on first base with two down. And the batter is Bobby Richardson. One for three this afternoon. Richardson single his first time up. Then he popped up. Got on on a fielder's choice in the fifth. He's up now for the fourth time. Eddie Casco, the shortstop, trots over to the mound to say a few words to his pitcher, Joey Jay, and now jogs back to his shortstop post. And there's activity now in the Reds' bullpen. As Richardson steps in. Bobby, the Yankee leadoff batter, comes up with Lopez on first, two down. As a look toward the runner, the pitch to Richardson. It's swung on as a hard hit ball on one hop to Chacon, and he races the second, makes the force out play there on Lopez to retire the side. Chacon moved to his right, came up with the ball on the hop, went over to touch the bag for the force out. So that ends action in the bottom half of the seventh with the totals here, showing no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. And the score at the end of seven full innings of play. The Reds four and the Yankees two. Wait, when you were calling the plays, I looked you up in Gillette's New World Series Encyclopedia and see where you won six series games. This handy volume contains the record of every player who ever appeared in a game. You fans can get your copy free when you buy the Gillette Adjustable Razor at the regular price of $1.95. The World Series Encyclopedia has 256 pages. The complete text of the new $5 volume contains line scores of every series game. It sparkles with illustrations and lively reading. And it's free with the purchase of the Gillette Adjustable Razor Set at the regular price of $1.95. The Adjustable is the world's only razor with nine different settings on a micrometer dial. One just right for you. With it, you get a dispenser of those amazing new Super Blue Blades for incredible shaving comfort. Get yours while this deal's still around. Free World Series Encyclopedia, Gillette Adjustable and Super Blue Blades for only $1.95, the price of the razor set alone. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? Saratoga Vichy with the yellow label, it outsells all the rest. The genuine Vichy with the yellow label tastes better tonight, feel better tomorrow. Saratoga with the yellow label. Saratoga Vichy brings you all the sparkle of a true champion. Make sure you're mixing with the best Saratoga Vichy. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Here's the eighth inning. Bob Wolf with Wade Hoyt here at Yankee Stadium in New York. The score is 4-2. The Reds lead the Yankees, and the new Yankee pitcher is Luis Arroyo, the Yankees' ace reliever, a left-hander who has moved on the scene, had a fabulous record in relief this past year. Here's Robinson leading off the eighth, and the first pitch is blown away, ball one. Arroyo throws a fine screwball, good sinker pitch, Left-hander, all set to work. Ball one to Robinson. There's the next offering. And it's a strike in the outside corner. Count now is one and one.
Louis, who's 33, comes from Puerto Rico. He's a chunky left-hander, 5'8 and a half, 190 pounds. What a record he had this past season. Here's the one-on-one -on -one pitch to Robinson. It's inside for ball two, two balls and a strike. This past year, Arroyo had 15 wins and just five losses as he was the big stopper in the bullpen for New York. Had a 2.19 earned run average. Two and one, the count to Robinson leading off on the top of the eighth. The score is 4-2. The Reds lead the New York Yankees. And as Arroyo takes too much time, Robinson steps out. The attendance this afternoon is 63,083. 63,083 on this fine afternoon. Now the two and one pitch. Here it comes. And there's a ball fouled back just to our right. And it's two and two to Robinson, who has popped up, been on base on an error, and grounded out on a tremendous play made by Boyer on him in the sixth inning. As Boyer made a headfirst dive toward the line to spear the hard ground ball and then jumped to his feet and whipped Robinson out. Here's the two and two pitch. Comes in low, and the count now is three and two to Robinson. Four to two. The Reds lead the New York Yankees in the eighth of the second game. The Yankees took the opener of the series yesterday. Ready for that three and two pitch now to Robinson. Here's the wind up by Arroyo. And the pitch on the way is wide. A screwball for ball four as Robinson draws a walk. And that brings up the homer hitter of the fourth inning, Gordy Coleman, who was one for three this afternoon at a two run homer in the fourth, earlier grounded out, and since then he has struck out. Arroyo broke. Joe Page's New York Yankee club record of 60 appearances in one season. Set in 1949. He was in 65 games this year. There's an attempted bunt missed for strike one. Dashing in from third base was Boyer. And the count now strike one to Coleman. Robinson on first. There's nobody out. We're in the top of the eighth. Louis no newcomer to the big leagues, but this is his biggest year of all. Here's the pitch. Coleman sends a dribbler along the third baseline. Arroyo goes over the field and makes a throw to first base. It's a wild throw. It's by Scowan. Robinson is rounding third. He's being waved into the plate. He scores. There's a throw being made to third base, and the out is made on Coleman sliding in as Blanchard picked up the ball and made a fine throw from right field to third for the out. Coleman topped that ball all along the third baseline and a few feet in. Arroyo went over to pick it up, made a wide throw to by the first baseman as the run scored, and then the throw from Blanchard going to third base to Boyer, Nab Coleman, who tried to stretch it all the way over to that hot corner. I'll give you the scoring in just a moment on it. The run by Robinson gives the Reds a lead of 5-2. to two. Batter Wally Post in the foul for strike one. Scored as a hit. And then an error by Arroyo. Here's the pitch. Swung on. It's a line shot to left field. In comes Barra. And the ball goes by Barra. He apparently misjudged it. Couldn't quite see it out there. On the way to second base is Post. He rounds third. He's on the way to third. And he goes in a third standing up. Barra came darting in, and he reached down just below his waist, and the ball just seemed to go right by him. I don't believe he touched it at all as the ball went right by him. It's a very vicious sunfield out there, and left, and Barra may have been looking up in the sun that time and missed the ball. So Wally Post is on third base. And there's going to be an intentional walk now to Gene Freeze. We're awaiting the scoring on that ball hit by Post. Freeze draws a second intentional walk, and that will bring up Johnny Edwards, who responded last time after the intentional walk with a base hit. In this inning, Robinson led off with a walk. Coleman dribbled the ball just to the left of the mound inside the third baseline. Arroyo picked it up and threw wild by Scourin at first base. 
as Robinson kept racing around the bases to score as the ball went caroming outside the right field line. Coleman, who got credit for a hit, kept moving up on the error by Arroyo. He was thrown out at third base on Blanche's throw to Boyer. Now Post is on third on his ball hit by Barra. Freeze on first, and here's Edwards. And the pitch is inside for a ball. Ball one to Edwards. Here's the next pitch coming up. And Edwards swings and lets a little pop up in a very short left over the head of Boyer. Coming in to score is Post. Freeze goes to third and in the second base goes Edwards. The bat broke in half that time as Edwards sent a little pop up and a short left with the infield in. Boyer couldn't get back on it. It hit, oh, just about 15 or 20 feet beyond third base. And on the play, post scores, Freeze races to third, and Edwards with a broken bat double, is on second base. So, the score is now 6-2 to two Cincinnati, and the batter is Joey J. and the infield is drawn tight with one who's on second and third. One out. There's ball one wide. The Yankees have committed two errors in this inning, and the Reds have come up with two hits. Infield drawn tight. There's a false break of third by Freeze. The pitch is wide for a ball. Ball two to Joey Jay as Freeze broke about a third of the way from third toward home and then put on the brakes. Freeze on third. Edwards is on second. Reds have scored twice in the inning. They lead six to two. Louis Arroyo winds. Here's the pitch to Jay. And it comes in low. Ball three. to Joey J. Here's Arroyo's next pitch and it's over for a called strike. Three and one. Three and one to J. Score the ball game is six to two. The Reds lead. J now steps out of the batter's box. Looks down to Otero at third. The coach before stepping back in. Runners on third and second with one out. Here's the three and one pitch. Swung on and missed. Count is three and two, and that time as Freeze made a false start again toward home plate. Scourin, watching at first base, started to come in just in case the squeeze might be on. Here's the next pitch, and a swing and a miss for the strikeout. So Jay goes down swing on a three and two pitch for the strikeout. And that brings up the leadoff batter, Ilio Chacon. As the Yankee infield now goes back with two away, two runs across, and Chacon stepping up. Runners on third and second. Here's a ball on one hop to Richardson, and there's the out at first base as Chacon is out to retire the side. Well, it was a big inning for the Cincinnati Reds. As in this frame, they came up with two runs. There were two hits, two Yankee errors, and two left on base. And the score at the end of seven and a half innings, Cincinnati six, and the Yankees two. In the bottom half of the eighth inning, Kubek leads off, followed by Maris and Berra. Score of the ball game is six to two. The Reds leading with six runs and eight hits. The Yankees have two runs, three hits, and three errors. And here's the pitch coming up to Kubek. There's a curve set right back through the middle through Jay's legs to center field. Kubek goes on with a single to center right through Jay's legs. And the batter now is Roger Maris, who is 0 for 2 and has drawn a walk. 
So Mara steps up. That hit was number four off Jay. Yankees have had three singles and a home run. As Roger Maris comes up now with Kubek on first and nobody out. Jay looks in to get the sign from Edwards. Kubek takes a lead off first base. Here's the pitch, and it's on the inside corner for a called strike. Strike one to Maris. Yogi Berra on deck. Yogi at the plate this afternoon has delivered two hits, including a two-run homer. Roger Maris at the plate with Wally Post playing deep and right. And Chacon, the second baseman, is playing on the edge of the outfield grass, and he's moved closer to the right field line. The next pitch coming up, it's a strike call. Two strikes to Roger Maris. And now Edwards hustles out to speak to Jay at the mound. Score of the ball game, Cincinnati 6 and the New York Yankees 2. The Yankees two runs, a two-run homer by Berra. The Reds had a two-run homer for Coleman to lead off their scoring. Added single runs in the fifth and the sixth and two more in the top of the eighth. Now Edwards is back. Count on Maris, strike two. Jay takes a look toward first base, then comes in with the pitch. Swung on and missed. Maris is out on the strikeout. That's the fifth strikeout for Jay, and he's nabbed Maris twice. And this brings up Yogi Berra. Yogi playing a rough sunfield here in Yankee Stadium. Saw a ball well tagged by Wally Post go by him. Yogi may have ticked the ball with his glove as he came rushing in. The ball was not impeded much as it kept bouncing back. And Post moved to third in the play. It was scored as an error for Yogi. At the plate, though, Yogi is at a two-run homer and a single. Tall right-hander set to work. Delivers, and Barra swings and sends a ball to right center field. Pinson moves, and he has it. That ball was topped a bit on Barra's swing. It was sinking very rapidly. Fly ball into right center, not too deep, as Pinson made the catch for... Out number two. And that brings up Johnny Blanchard. And we note that just on the infield area, with the lights pointing in that direction, that they have just started to put on one of the banks of lights. So it's Blanchard now stepping in. He's popped up, grounded out, and popped up again. And the pitch on the way is low, ball one. Ball one to Johnny Blanchard. Jocko Conlon kicks a little bit of dirt off home plate. Now comes back as Blanchard steps back in. Kubek on first base with two down. Joey Jay on the mound for Cincinnati. Pitching a stout-hearted ball game this afternoon. The pitch is over for a called strike. And the count now is one and one to Blanchard. Blanchard has been a real clutch player this past season for the New York Yankees. Coming up with big hits and game-winning homers. Left-handed batter. Hit and waiting with a count of one and one. Two down. Here's the pitch. And there's a pop-up, which is foul outside of third near the seats. Freeze is racing for it. Still moving. He has it. And he sank to his knees in front of the Reds' dugout as he made the catch. So in the bottom half of the eighth inning. No runs. One hit. No errors, and one man is left. And the score at the end of eight full innings of play. Cincinnati six, the Yankees two. A no-hitter, a perfect game for Don Larson. That's from the most famous World Series game ever, Don Larson's 1956 no-hitter. Here's the actual play-by-play of the final out. I'll guarantee that nobody, but nobody has left this ballpark. Mitchell waiting. Two strikes, ball one. Here comes the pitch. Strike three. A no-hitter, a perfect game for Don Larson. Yogi Berra runs out there. He leaps on Larson. Listen to this crowd roar. 
a baseball classic. And the big story is in the Gillette World Series Encyclopedia. This handy pocketbook contains 256 pages of baseball knowledge, records of every player, cartoons by Willard Muller, practically every World Series fact and figure. And it's yours free when you buy the Gillette Adjustable Razor with Super Blue Blades at the regular price of $1.95. Get your free Gillette Encyclopedia real soon. We move now into the ninth inning with the Reds holding their 6-2 to two lead. Eddie Casco leads off against Louis Arroyo. Casco is one for four this afternoon, right-handed batter. Arroyo, left-hander, winds. Here's the first pitch. It is a curve for a called strike in the outside corner. Strike one to Eddie Casco, be followed by Pinson and Robinson. Arroyo winds. Here's the left-hander's next pitch. A screwball comes in low, and the count now is one and one. Score of the ball game, as we are in the ninth now, is six to two, Cincinnati leading the second game of the series against the Yankees. Reds have had eight hits, the Yankees four, the Yankees have committed three errors. The pitch swung on, there's a pop-up. Bobby Richardson is moving under it, waiting for it now, and he has it just about three or four feet back on the grass and short right, as Casco is out number one in the top of the ninth inning. Batter stepping up is Veda Pinson, who is 0 for 4. He's grounded out in this game. Flied out, struck out, and then he lined out. Left-handed batter. Comes up with one out and nobody on, facing Louis Arroyo. Ralph Terry started out the ball game, pitched a fine, creditable ball game today, followed by Arroyo in the eighth. Pitch comes in low. Ball one to Veda Pinson. Frank Robinson is on deck. And for the red so far has been Joey Jay pitching this afternoon with an excellent effort. The pitch to Pinson swung on and missed. The count now is one and one. Each team has had one home run this afternoon. Two run homer by Coleman and a two run homer by Yogi Berra. One and one pitch coming up to Pinson and it's over for a called strike two ball one strike two the Reds actually brought a very fine temperament, you might say, as a whole ball club into this series. Ball one, strike two to Pinson. Pitch comes in wide. The boys were tense naturally, as anybody would be before a World Series game. But they were certainly not overawed by the fact that they were going into a World Series for the first time for these particular players, or that they were facing the vaunted New York Yankees on the New York's home grounds. The pitch accidentally fouled as Pinson falls back from the pitch. The count now is two and two. I noted the attitude speaking to the Reds players and they've demonstrated it with very alert play out here right throughout the second game in particular on the bases defensively and as a consequence they're leading at this moment by a score of six to two. The pitch coming up to Pinson. Swung on. There's a fly ball to short left. Bear is racing for it toward the line. He cannot get it. Plays it on the hop. There's Pinson on the way to second, and he goes in, standing up, beating the throw. Made to Pinson on second base with a double as Barra moved toward the line in short left. Couldn't get to it. Oh, that's a wicked set up there. Notice that Yogi was looking up as he ran. Robinson now steps up with Pinson in scoring position and one away. Score is 6-2 to two as Cincinnati leads. Here's the pitch. Robinson takes wide for a ball. Robinson is 0-3. for But he has scored two runs this afternoon. He got on base on an error and on a walk. And he scored both times. Ball one to Robinson. A Royal set to work. Here's the next pitch. A high pop-up, which is just foul. Out to the left field line. Back goes Boyer, and uh, he reaches and has it. Tony Kubek was going over right beside him. As Robinson is out on the foul pop-up. The foul line extends toward the seats, which jut out there, and Boyer went over close to the seats. 
to pull that one in for out number two. And that brings to the plate Gordy Coleman, who has two hits today, including a two-run homer. He topped the ball in the eighth inning, which actually opened up the gates again for the Reds. Scored as a base hit and an error. He swings with a vicious cut and misses for strike one. Arroyo went over to pick up the little top ball. His throw was wild at first as Robinson, who was on the bases, came around to score. And Coleman got credit for a hit, kept moving on Arroyo's poor throw, and was nabbed to third on Blanchett's fine throw from right into third base. Here's the pitch. And there's a hard hit ball, which is taken by Scourin, covering as Arroyo for the out. So the side is retired and a good defensive play. And on the top of the ninth, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. And the score at the end of eight and a half innings. Cincinnati six and the Yankees two. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? Saratoga Vichy with the yellow label. It outsells all the rest. The genuine Vichy with the yellow label. Tastes better tonight. Feel better tomorrow. Saratoga with the yellow label. For true excitement, you can't beat the World Series. And for the true excitement of a perfect mixer, you can't beat Saratoga Vichy. WGY, WGF, I'm Schenectady. Here in Yankee Stadium in New York, Bob Wolf with Wade Hoyt, the score of the ball game 6-2, to two, and now the Yankees come up in the bottom half of inning number 9. And Elston Howard will be leading off against Joey Jay. He'll be followed by Bill Scourin and Cleet Boyer, the listed hitters. Although Ralph Houck, of course, always has the prerogative of making changes if he wants to during this bottom half of the ninth inning. Howard, who will be leading off, grounded out. He has walked and he hit into a double play last time around. Jay, all set to work. The bottom of the ninth inning, 6-2 Cincinnati. Jay starts the windup, and here's the first pitch to Howard. It's inside ball one. Casey Stengel is walking toward an exit way, rousing the crowd here as they crane up to take a look at the very colorful former Yankee manager. There's a ball top just in front of home plate. It's picked up by Edwards, the throw to first base, and the throw is made to first base for the out. Howard is claiming a foul at the plate, and uh, Ralph Houck is coming up, and there's a possibility that in swinging twice there, uh, Howard took the swing and then looked as if the ball may have hit the bat a second time. Edwards picked up the ball as it dribbled a few feet in front of the plate and made a throw to first base. And, of course, the Yankees are up there discussing the situation right now, but... Howard is out. Now, whether or not the out will be made at first base or for hitting the ball at twice with the bat, we will have to wait and see. But it was a fair ball, and the out is registered, and Howard is out, and Ralph Howard goes back into the dugout. Here's Bill Scourin. Jay Wines, and the pitch is strike one. Strike one to Scourin, who is 0 for 2 and has walked. Here's the windup. And the next pitch. Swung on and missed. Good curveball in the outside corner. The play, the official score has ruled, went from Edwards to Coleman for the out there. As Howard's contention was that the ball was fouled in the batter's box. And umpire Jocko Conlin right there in the scene. Wave that the ball was into fair territory where Edwards made the play. 
at first base. Two to three if you're scoring. Count is ball one, strike two now to Scourin. We're in the bottom half of the ninth inning. There's one away. And the score is six to two. Cincinnati leads the New York Yankees. Ready for that one and two pitch. Jay starts the windup. Here's the pitch on the way. A swing and a miss. The ball looked like it was just barely ticked, but it stayed right in the middle of Edwards for the strikeout. So there are two down in the bottom half of the ninth. That's strikeout number six for Joey Jay. On the batter now is Pete Boyer, who is 0 for 2 and has walked. So, two down in the bottom of the ninth, and Cleet Boyer steps in as the Reds are pressing at Victory's door. Here's the pitch coming up, and there's a ball fouled back out of play for strike one. Strike one to Boyer. Two down, nobody aboard. Six to two, Cincinnati over New York in the second game of the series. Joey Jay on the mound, 21 game winner this past season, rubbing up the ball, now puts the glove back on. Jay looks in, gets the sign. This is first big league series assignment. Here's the pitch coming up to Boyer, and it comes in low, and the count now is one and one. Reds infield talking it up behind their young right hander. Jay toes the rubber, count as one and one to Boyer. Two down, bottom half of the ninth. Here's the side from Edwards. Jay starts the windup, and here's the one and one pitch. It's swung on as a foul, which is going off to the left and going out of play, and the count now is ball one, strike two. Jay goes back off the mound once again, rubbing up a new ball. The count, ball one, strike two. Boyer steps back in the batter's box. He's waiting. Jay off the mound again as the glove off, again giving that ball a good rubbing. And now the right-hander peers forward, gets the sign. Count is one and two to Boyer. Two outs, nobody on. Bottom of the ninth. We're all set to go as Jay starts the windup. And here comes the one and two pitch. Wide on a breaking pitch. And Jay, one up with both arms is to say, oh, that was close. Two and two. Ready for the next one now. Two and two to Boyer. Here's the sign from Edwards. Jay all set. Boyer has that bat resting in his shoulder. Now it takes it off as Jay starts the windup. And here comes the two and two pitch. High three and two. And Jay obviously is bearing down trying to get just that one more, which could be so elusive. He slipped just slightly coming off the mound that time. The count now is three and two to Boyer. The score of the ball game, 6-2 Cincinnati over the New York Yankees with two outs in the bottom half of the ninth inning. And it's all the way to Boyer, 3-2. and two. The Yankees with a past history of coming up with those unexpected rallies, particularly in the late innings, trying to ignite one now. 3-2, and two. Jay getting the sign, the right-hander, starts the windup. And here's the 3-2 and two pitch. There's a foul back. Count holds. Joey Jay again back off the mound. 26-year-old right-hander. 6'4", 225 pounder. Again looks in, sights the target from Edwards. Count is 3-2. and two. Boyer digs in. Now we're set for that 3-2 and two pitch. Here's the windup. And the pitch. High as Boyer walks. And there's a man on first base with two away. As the Yankees now go to the bench once again. And coming up as a pinch hitter is Billy Gardner, who will be batting for Louis Arroyo. Billy Gardner. And a 225 batting average this past season. He's a right-handed batter. Fired earlier in the air from the Minnesota Twins by the New York Yankees. Gardner steps in. 
Man on first two outs. The pitch is lined right to Casco. And there's the ball game. Gardner lines out to Casco as Jay accepts congratulations coming out off the mound into the dugout. The bottom of the ninth, there were no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. And the final totals on the ball game: Cincinnati, six runs, nine hits, no errors. And for the New York Yankees, two runs, four hits, and three errors. In a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. In last year's series, the Yankees got more hits, scored more runs, and racked up the highest team batting average in the history of the series. Yet, the Pirates walked off with a champion's share. You'll find this and a thousand other facts in the new Gillette World Series Encyclopedia, which is yours free with the purchase of the Gillette Adjustable Razor Set at the regular price of $1.95. This 256-page book is a statistical gold mine jam-packed with series facts and figures, including the lifetime record of every player who ever appeared in a series. It contains every word of the new $5 hardbound World Series Encyclopedia, yet it doesn't cost you a cent. It's yours for free with the purchase of the Gillette Adjustable Razor. The Adjustable, you know, is the famous razor with nine different blade settings, one just right for you. With it comes a dispenser of those amazingly comfortable Super Blue Blades. Sound like a bargain? You bet. The adjustable razor with super blue blades, plus your free World Series encyclopedia. All for just $1.95, the price of the razor set alone. And now to sum up the highlights of this ball game, let's hear from Wade Hoyt. Well, first of all, I guess they're going crazy in Cincinnati right now. Today, when the Cincinnati Reds defeated the New York Yankees 6 to 2, it was the first time in World Series history that the Cincinnati Reds have defeated the New York Yankees. As you recall, back in 1939, the, Yan the Yankees took four straight from the Reds. And uh, as the Yankees won the first one yesterday with Whitey Ford pitching, it was five straight defeats for the Reds by the Yankees in World Series history. The, Yan the Cincinnati Reds, not dismayed, one whip, snapped to it today, and won their first victory over the Yankees, and Joey Jay becomes the first Cincinnati pitcher in Yankee history, or rather in Cincinnati history, to defeat the New York Yankees in a World Series. I would say Joey Jay's great pitching, supported by the Reds' uh, batting, fielding, and a couple of breaks that went the way of the Reds today, overcame the New York Yankees. And Jay and Chacon and Casco, I would say, combined to give the Cincinnati Reds today a great defense. Of course, pitching is part of defense. And when Joey Jay held the uh, hard-hitting New York Yankees to two runs and four hits, why, he did a, uh, another remarkable pitching task. And as a matter of fact, now the Yankees in two games against Cincinnati pitching have, have, had, a total, have had a total of four runs and ten hits, as they had six hits in yesterday's game. In the matter of batting, Coleman, of course, with his home run, scored the first runs by the Yankee, uh, by the Reds in this series. As Coleman propelled a long home run into the right field bleachers in the fourth inning after Robinson had reached base through an error. Of course, the Yankees came right back and tied it up as Joey Jay walked Roger Maris and then Yogi Berra, who's always a, a threat and always a tremendous hitter in the World Series, Parked one out there in the right field pavilion to tie it up at two to two, but uh, twice in the ball game they walked the rookie Johnny Edwards. Uh, uh, they, they pardon me, they walked the seventh batter in the lineup, Gene Freeze, to get at Johnny Edwards, and twice in two successive turns at bat, the rookie Johnny Edwards came through uh, with base hits to drive in two runs in the sixth inning with a single and in the eighth inning with a double. And, of course, that uh, added materially uh, to the uh, Reds' build-up of the six runs. The Reds played a, a, a very uh, good ball game today, fine defensive work 
as I say, by Casco. Excellent work by Chacon, who substituted for Blassingame because Blassingame is out with an injured index finger. There were two double plays by the Reds to spark it, and I would say also we can't forget that the New York Yankees third baseman, Cleet Boyer, certainly played another remarkable defensive game, and uh, he is a tremendous third baseman, and of course on the defense, on the offensive, why Yogi Berra was in there with that homer. Now, quickly, Chacon had one hit, Casco had a single, uh, Pinson had a double, Robinson had no hits, but he did score two runs. He reached base through an error and a base on balls. Coleman had two runs batted in with a home run, then he had an additional single, and Post had was in there with a single and a double. He also scored two runs. Gene Freeze was walked twice intentionally. Johnny Edwards batted in two runs with a single and a double. For the New York Yankees, Richardson had one hit, Quebec a single, Maris had no hits in three official trips, Maris has gone seven turns to bat now without a hit, however he did walk and he scored on a home run by Berra, Berra had a home run and a single. Then the, the rest of the batting order, Blanchard, Howard, Scourn, Boyer, Terry, Lopez, Arroyo and Gardner had no hits whatsoever. As the Yankees wound up with two runs, four hits, and three errors. The winning team, the Cincinnati Reds, six runs, nine hits, no errors. The attendance was 63,083. A total attendance for the two games here in the stadium of 125,480. The time of this second game, the second World Series game, was two hours and 43 minutes. Uh, Terry was the losing pitcher, and Joey Jay was the winner. Jay was very good all the way through. He was a little bit wild, uh, but on the other hand, Jay struck out six, and he walked six. The starting pitcher, Terry, walked two, struck out seven. Arroyo, the reliever, walked two and struck out one. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience, and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. And our deep thanks to our engineer, Harry Alexander, our producer, Lenny Dillon, and now this is Wade Hoyt speaking for Bob Wolf, inviting you to be sure to tune in Saturday at 1.45 Eastern Daylight Time for the third game of this exciting 1961 World Series brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation, where engineering puts something extra into every car. And Gillette Safety Razor Company. This has been an NBC Radio Network production. Are you mixing with the best? Saratoga Vichy with the yellow label. It outsells all the rest. The genuine Vichy with the yellow label. Tastes better tonight. Feel better tomorrow. Saratoga with the yellow label. Hope you've enjoyed the game. Know you'll enjoy Saratoga Vichy. Make sure you're mixing with the best. Saratoga Vichy. This is WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Thanks, Ed Eckert. You too, NBC, Cincinnati Red Legs, and New York Yankees. Well, so much for the thanks. We're back here on the Bill Edwardson Show now. Seven minutes till four o'clock. We're a little late. Going to be a little busy for the next couple of hours. You stay with us till 545 with music. First, we interrupt our program for this. Here is a special Chevrolet release. Listeners are urged to visit a Chevrolet dealer showroom to see the new models unveiled by the Chevrolet Motor Division. The new 1962 Chevrolet, Corvair, and the totally new Chevy 2 are receiving widespread public acclaim. Now, back to your regular program. We're back with Elliot Lawrence first, and did you say Dixie? <laughs> 